Hold on it. Easy. Lock scanners. Scanners locked. Activate auto grab. Auto grab activated. Watch him. Careful. Gene? Aye, sir. We've got him. Are we on full magnoscope? Yes, my commander. Kill the automatic. Sir? Put it on manual. I want this baby myself. It's all yours, commander. Oh, I get so excited. What? Go get him, commander. Give me a countdown to ejection time. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Here three, we two, go. One, zero. zero. Mission completed. We've cleaned up all the trash in the Milky Way. Now, put her on Astro Track and let's get out of here. Welcome to the bicentennial of the founding of this space station uh, known as Perma-1. I want to thank you all, ladies, gentlemen, humanoids, multiforms, polymorphopods, genunites, conglons, transpodulites. As you know, I am Dr. Otto Palindrome, superintendent-in-chief of Perma-1. And if I may quote from the First Amendment to our Confederation's Declaration of Unity, you are all equally welcome here regardless of species, life system, echo mass, or shape. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, on the other side of this trans panel, you can share in the serenity of our command center. The operations room where those whom you have appointed to govern our system and its way of life work tirelessly and calmly to preserve and maintain universal harmony. <laughs> Until now. <laughs> Signing on. To augment my official sanitation patrol reports, I have decided to keep a diary of my adventures. Assuming, of course, that I have any adventures. First, my name is Adam Quark, commander of this ship. Oh, sorry, old fella. Almost forgot. Ready for your dinner, old pal? Okay, come on. Come on. Come and get it. Come on. Ah! Too tight, pal! Too 
Mm. Here's your dinner. Here's your dinner. Good boy, Ergo. That's the way. Eat him up. Eat him up. To continue, my crew. The second in command position is held jointly by Betty and Betty. One of them is a clone, an artificial laboratory created identical twin of the other. I'm extremely fond of Betty. If only I knew which Betty it was that I am extremely fond of. <laughs> Our chief engineer is a transmute, Gene, or as he or she is sometimes called Gene. Our research and equipment specialist is the eminent scientist, O.B. Mudd, who lost an eye some years ago when he went to sleep for several hours while looking into his microscope. In his spare time, he usually works on Andy, a servo-mechanical android that he is determined to perfect someday. I, myself, am just an ordinary human, air-breathing homo sapiens descended from inhabitants of planet Earth, now abandoned. Oh. There we go. No wall. Down there we go. Down there we go. Good. Good boy. <clears throat> My ancestors were members of a subgroup called Americans. Archaeological diggings made in the western and southern sections of their country indicate that these so-called Americans worshipped and perhaps were governed by a fully clothed English-speaking mouse. <laughs> You've had your dinner, fella. Time for Betty now. As our new orbit moves us toward Ursa Major in the M82 sector, I would like to close by saying... Uh, 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 I, I, I would like to close by saying... Uh, I would just like to close by, by saying... Start signing off. Stay, Virgo, stay. He's not going to stay. Thank you, Betty. Thank you, Betty. That's enough rushing off. That's enough rushing off. That's an order. That's an order. All right. Let's get back to work. Interface. Give me the head, please. Interface. Give me the head, please. I am not deaf. Interface, this is an emergency. Would you please hurry? I've only got four hands, you know. Yes. Oh, a palindrome here, sir. Sorry to disturb you. That's all right, palindrome. I was just, as usual, thinking. <laughs> sir, we've uh, got a bit of a headache down here. Don't tell me about headaches, palindrome. <laughs> no, sir. I wrote the book on headaches. Yes, sir. Just give me the facts. An extraordinarily large explosion from the M82 sector seems to have propelled an enzyme cloud clear through Ursa Major's gravity field. It's practically pure protein, and it's metabolizing everything in its path, including gravity. I suppose you're going to tell me this enzyme thing is going to hit us full on and turn us all into little bitty meson particles. Mm, at about 1,500 hours tomorrow. I I'm sorry, sir. I know how you feel. Can you imagine a migraine the size of a supernova? Uh, no, sir. Then you don't know how I feel. All right, have we got any ships in that sector? Uh, just one, sir. Who's in command? Adam Quark. That's the worst news yet. What cargo is he carrying? 200,000 tons of compressed space garbage. Wonderful. No, uh, Quark's not totally inexperienced, sir. He did see active service during the Sagittarius Rebellion. Uh, wasn't he captured by the enemy? Oh, uh, yes, sir, by the Solonites. Animated, mildly intelligent vegetables. 
tubers, actually. Quark was taken prisoner by a unit of dissident potatoes. Uh, sir, if, if Quark could move his ship into the center of that enzyme cloud and set off his own reactor system... And create a nuclear implosion. Yes, it might work. Of course, it would mean certain death for everybody on board. This is a tough one, Palindrome. But as you know, one of the responsibilities of those in charge, sometimes, is to order the sacrifice of the few uh, for the sake of the many. Yes, sir. Uh, particularly when those in charge are among the many. <laughs> I'll see you below, Adam. Oh, yes, absolutely. I'll see you below, Adam. Of course, yeah. <laughs> Have you finished the auto system checkout? Checkout completed, power load is at maximum. Good. Lunar and solar readings on full mesh. Good. Orbit program is locked in. Good. And guess what? What? I've almost finished my needlepoint. <laughs> it's lovely, isn't it, Doc? Oh, boy. Request permission to speak to the commander. What is it? Alone. I know when I'm not wanted. <laughs> I'll see you below, Commander. You ought to take it easy on Gene, Doc. I don't like transmutes. Transmutes are just like everyone else, except, of course, for the fact that they have a full set of male and female chromosomes. Would you let your brother or sister marry one? <laughs> just tell me what's on your mind, Doc. I'm requesting a transfer. I want to get away from the sanitation business while I'm still young. Look, Doc, I know how you feel, but we've got a job to do that's just as big and as important as any other. Besides, where would you transfer to? We're 17 light years from the nearest space station. Let me out. I'll walk. <laughs> Sir, Quark's ship has moved into the perimeter of the enzyme cloud. We can't make normal voice contact. Now, what do you suggest? An emergency laser ram. I've already written one up, but I have to have your authority. Get the interface operator. Yes, sir. Interface. This is the head. I want to send an emergency lasergram to the M82 sector. That's awfully far. We know that, interface. That would be $422,000 for 10 words and $68,000 for each additional word. What is the message, please? Sixteen words, palindrome. Well, we can cut deer. Everything all right? How's it going, Andy? Everything is fine, thank you. Thank you? You're welcome. Yes, I see. And how do you feel? I feel wonder. I feel wonder. I feel wonder. Full. You're getting there. Amanda. What is it? Look at this. We've got a spectrum reading that's gone right off the graph. Something's coming this way. Something big. And it's not solid. It's emitting a totally varied wave cycle. A totally varied wave cycle. Do you understand what that means? What does it mean? I wish I knew. <laughs> what would happen? If it hit us. At best, the ship would be anatomized, and we'd all be turned into instant space jelly. Of course, that's looking on the bright side. <laughs> Isn't there a chance you could be mistaken? Yes. Uh, no. Time to ingest what's on the menu. Special treat tonight, Commander. 
all your favorites. Hearts of Plankton, Hot Space Biscuits, Puree of Astro Germ, and Moon Snail's Flambe. What about a moistening agent? Uh, Chateau Alio from the Great Bear Constellation, uh, 2117. Mmm, a great century for wine. <laughs> That's what I call indigestion. <laughs> now, we're all set for a nice long nap. Mm. Commander Quark. Yes, Gene. How long do you want the cryogenopod auto timer set for? Uh, let's see. This is April 4th. Uh, set them for full energy restoration on June 3rd. Right. At 7 a.m. That early? That's two months from now. Well, that gown needs her beauty sleep. I suppose you want to be tucked in? You come near me, you'll end up looking for two patches. You got that mud? All right, knock it off. Big bully. What do you got, Doc? Don't know yet. New sample findings. I want to look at them under the stethoscope. I'm going to check the gyro channels before I turn in. Good. Oh. What is it? See something? No. Nothing at all. It's all black. Other eye, Doc. What? Oh. Yes. <laughs> me your name. I think you are very attractive. Won't you speak to me? Andy, no, stop that. Come with me, Andy. That is not a toy. It's the garbage control. That is a very important piece of expensive machinery. Yes, but isn't she cute? <laughs> Shouldn't we take evasive action? It wouldn't do any good. It's faster than we are. Give it to me straight, Doc. What would you do if you were me? Packed! <laughs> Commander? Yes, Betty? Whatever happens, I'm proud to be sharing the experience with you. Thank you, Betty. You like me a little bit, don't you? Oh, more than just a little bit. More than her? Well... Because she's only a clone. I'm the real person. She is not! It's not true! Easy, Betty. She was made from a cell that came from underneath my fingernail. Honest! Yes, yes. Oh, I believe you. Adam, hmm. I'm even prouder to be sharing this experience with you than she is. Because... As someone once said, death is the greatest adventure, you know? Sure, but you have to remember that whoever said it probably wasn't dead at the time. <laughs> Coming! Look, we must be inside the thing now. If those hydrochemical readings are correct, it's as though we're being digested. By Jiminy, that's it. It's some kind of protein hydrolyzing amino producer. What does it mean? I'm not quite sure. But it's got a nice ring to it. OK, I think we've got it. Let's cut out the good luck. It seems superfluous anyway. Interface, we've got it down to 10 words. It's about time. What is the message, please? Palindrome, I'll put the lasergram through. You watch those command table readouts and keep me informed. I want to know if Quark makes it. Then if he doesn't? Uh, lie. <laughs> 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 
direction, away from our solar system, away from our civilization, away from everything we hold dear, mostly us. <laughs> Commander, it's an emergency laser gram from Perma-1. Quark, blow your reactor and save Galaxy. Nice knowing you. <laughs> you know... If Andy hadn't dumped that load, we would all be extremely dead. <laughs> we owe our lives to that plucky jumble of spare parts. Good old Andy. You're not going to be just any ordinary servo mechanism. I'm going to program you at a genius level. You learn to think like we do. We'll teach you to speak like we do and behave like we do. In fact, Andy, when we get through with you, you'll be just like us. What do you think of that? Let me out! Let me out! What happened? Woke up and no one was around. I was so frightened. Won't you tell me what happened? Get away from me, Doc. Please. <laughs> we had a little trouble back there, Gene, but we straightened everything out. In fact, we were probably responsible for saving the entire galaxy. Yeah? Well, it's a mess down below. The load control box is in the middle of the cabin. That is my fiance. <laughs> What's he babbling about? Oh, nothing, really. Hey! It's his fiance. Are we talking about the load control box? This load control box? That robot is sick. But it is romantic. <laughs> Perma-1 to Quark. Perma-1 to Quark. This is Quark. Who? Quark. What? This is Quark. All right. You don't have to yell. <laughs> Dr. Palindrome, I have Commander Quark for you. Quark, I have a message for you and your crew from the head himself. Yes, sir. Congratulations for your superb work in the face of indescribable danger. A grateful galaxy salutes you. You are directed to proceed with your ship to Stellar Quadrant 7 and look for signs of trouble. Your permanent mission now is to scour the universe. Hey! <laughs> now we're going to see some action. Oh, and, and Quark. Yes, sir. On your way to Quadrant 7, would you swing by the small cloud of Magellan? They haven't had a pickup there in two weeks, and there are space baggies everywhere. <laughs> all right. You all heard that? Let's start scouring the universe. Andy, we owe this all to you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, let's get this ship moving. You know, Doc, I really believe that some higher consciousness that manipulates the infinite pattern of cause and effect must have selected us to play this vital role. At least that's one way of looking at it. Or it's just pure dumb luck. That's the other way.
emergency. Emergency plan red. Gorgon alert. Evacuate immediately. This is a red alert. It's an emergency. It's an emergency, but nobody panic, please. Nobody panic. Uh, uh, Benzel, you're looking awfully green. You can't go green on me now. You all I want to do, relax, relax. Remember, children and quasi norms first. That's it. Keep moving. Keep moving. Think. Think, what are you doing? What do you mean you don't know? Will you two stop doing that? What do you mean you don't know? Oh, well, you could organize the passenger list. You could hand out weapons. Do something. This is an evacuation, not a picnic. Go, oh, Commander. Commander, you're late. You're late. We have a very important meeting with the head. Please be careful with your tails and tentacles, and multipens must bring an extra pair of socks. Come in, Commanders, for a message from the head. I appear before you in the midst of the greatest crisis in the 211-year history of the United Galaxy. Our arch enemies, the dreaded Gorgons, have developed a weapon so powerful, I can't believe it. At this very moment, the High Gorgon himself is speeding towards our beloved Perma-1. Commander Walker, you will evacuate our leading scientists. Commander Estro, you will evacuate our top secret files. And Quark, you will seek out and destroy the Gorgon Doomsday Ship down to your last breath of life. The galaxy ad infinitum. Palindrome, we've got to talk to you. Oh, sure. There's nothing going on. I've got plenty of time. Should we talk about poetry or philosophy or how about the history of rust? Palindrome. Wouldn't that make an interesting conversation? Say, don't you have a mission or something? I'm supposed to seek out and destroy the High Gorgon's doomsday ship. Well, that should keep you busy. Palindrome, it's huge. It's fast. It's powerful. What am I supposed to do, ram it with my souped-up garbage ship? Oh, you're always asking for a good mission, Quark. This is too good. Nobody could do this and survive. Nah, nobody but you, Quark. You've got one of the finest crews in the fleet, don't you? Well, they're good with garbage, but what can an emotional transmute, a homemade robot, a Betty, her clone, and a plant do against the Gorgon's doomsday ship? You're not questioning the head, Quark. Of course not. The head did not become the head by luck, you know. I know that. You may not realize it, but the head always has something in mind, no matter what he does. For you to question him, I'm, I'm not time questioning. Time. I'm not questioning. No, wait, yes, I am questioning. That's exactly what I'm doing. The head is ordering me to my death. Quark. Quark, the head has commanders pleading, begging for the chance to go on this mission. Then why doesn't he let them go? Come with me. The head doesn't respect commanders who beg. The head likes commanders who ask questions. But why me? That's why he likes you. You ask those questions. Palindrome, do I have to? You're beautiful, Quark. Keep asking those questions. Palindrome. Quark, the head himself has ordered me to give you the United Galaxy's greatest weapon. He has? Yes. And here it is, Quark, the source. The source. So this is the source. Oh, well, we don't want you using it to wash your portholes. We save it for the biggies, for clashes between good and evil. All my life, I've heard tales of its great power. The source can do anything. In fact, the last time the head ordered the source used was during the Quasar Rebellion. That was 200 years ago. You mean, this is the first time That's since... That's right. You are the first man in 200 years to be given the source. That's quite an honor. I'm going to make a prediction. With the help of the source, you, Adam Quark, are going to defeat the High Gorgon and save the entire galaxy. That would look good on my record. And as an added incentive, if you make it back, next week lunch is on me. If I make it back. All right, dinner. Starnote, this is Commander Adam Quark. Up until this moment, the most action I've seen was caused by a tear in a space garbage baggie. Now the head has given me the source and ordered me out to destroy the High Gorgon's doomsday ship. The fate of the entire United Galaxy rides with me. From garbage to Gorgons, space is a very unpredictable job. Betty? Yes? Take it up three points. Uh, three, Commander. Betty? Yes? Any contact with the Gorgons? None yet, Commander. 
Nervous, Commander. What makes you say that, Ficus? I've noticed that you animals have a tendency under high pressure to activate particular glands, producing a moisture and a very peculiar odor. You're speaking of sweat, Ficus? I have heard that terminology used, Commander. And as a plant, you do not sweat, do not feel nervous? Quite the contrary, Commander. We plants never feel pressure. The worst we do is wilt. Ah, but as a plant, you can never love. Yes, but as an animal, you must endure the pain of love. That's true, Ficus. But the pain of love is what makes love so endearing. Well, following your logic, Commander, the pain of a toothache makes a toothache endearing. The more painful, the more endearing. <laughs> Star note, I've just argued over the concept of love with a plant and lost. Uh, sir, the dreaded Gorgons are approaching the planet Spartan. The Spartans are the fiercest and most savage warriors in the galaxy. If the Gorgons can be stopped, it will be in this battle. Master of the galaxy. Hail, High Gorgon, highest leader, almighty seer of depth and perception. People of Sparta, this is the High Gorgon. I demand your unconditional surrender. You shall be treated with compassion, honor, and patience. You have 20 seconds before I blow you out of the galaxy. This is Pyrrhus, leader of the Spartans. We are conquerors. We do not capitulate to anyone. You have 10 seconds. Your threats don't frighten us, High Gorgon. Force is more powerful than you have tried. I suggest you take a closer look at my spaceship. Your ship? We see no spaceship. All we see is a large maroon planet. That is my spaceship. Just give us a few minutes to move our things out of the palace. <laughs> I don't believe it. So much for the fierce Spartans. Didn't even fire a shot. I have known the Spartans to plunder entire planets for the sheer fun of it. So much for fun. Our only hope now is Quark. Quark. <laughs> Gene, I'd like to hold it to speed. Can the reactor handle this? Sure, Commander. I'll get this thing so hopped up, we'll go through time barriers. Good. Commander, this mission is no place for cowards. Please take me home. Will you quit whining? Andy's scared to death. He's driving me space bonkers. Listen, spacehead, I am a machine. I will live forever unless this crew gets me destroyed. Andy in space, it's all for one and one for all. Catchy phrase, but, um... We're not gonna get destroyed. We've got the source, and the source is power. I'd rather have a gun. Hey, Commander, do you hate those crunchy Gorgons like I do, huh? They aren't the dreaded Gorgons for nothing, Gene. Yeah, me too. Sometimes I dream about them. You ever dream about them, Commander? Those grungy, cruddy, lousy Gorgons, huh? <laughs> I gotta go, Gene. Hey, listen, Commander, after we crush the Gorgons with the source, we crush all the little Gorgon friends, huh? Yeah, we get the Blotons, the Pod people, then we're gonna get the Durhams. Maybe we'll get the Wood people, too. Boy, I wanna get the Slime people next, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, Commander, I can't get into this mission. <laughs> Star note. Having a full set of male and female chromosomes makes Gene a very unusual person. Gene, this is the best mission we've ever had. Honest! I'm sorry, girls. I, I know you like action, but I myself, I, I prefer the arts. We'll talk about this later, Gene. Right now, we're ready to release the source. Source? Source? Uh, the mission? You, you know, defeating the Gorgons and saving the galaxy. 
Now is the time to turn back. Ficus, do you sense anything? I sense a heightening of the salon rays. I'm also getting a reading on the alcosithity. Ficus. It appears to be modulating on its scooter axis. Ficus, for the sake of those of us who are not raised in fertilizer, could you explain that in English? In other words, Commander, the energy in this room is going up. I am the source. Source? Where are you? I am everywhere and everything. And as everything, how do we use you to defeat the dreaded Gorgons? You must learn to believe in me. Your belief must be complete and genuine. Do you believe, Adam Quark? Yes. Yes, I believe. Remove the gyro bearing from the robot's autolibrum system. I am filled with anger. Your hands are cold. The rest of you set your gamma guns on the equivalent of a pinprick. When I give the word, I want you to fire at the commander until I give you the signal to stop. Uh, uh let me just get this uh, straight. Uh, you, uh, you want them to fire their guns at me? Yes. Mm. <laughs> uh, what am I supposed to be doing? You will block the shots with the ball bearing. This I've got to see. If you believe in me, if you really believe, not a single laser will reach your body. Not one? Not a nick. You may fire at will. Nay. <laughs> Fire at will. That's enough! Ficus, you enjoyed that. I can assure you, Commander, I was only obeying orders. If you'll recall, the source said to continue fire until the source itself gave the signal to stop. Source, why did you not block one single shot? You didn't really believe. I was doing something! This time you must believe in me even as a laser snip at your body. Commence firing. One more time. <laughs> Ooh, ah, oh. Believe in me. Release yourself into my power. Trust in me. That's enough. You actually blocked our shots. You believed. You will learn quickly about me now. And we can conquer the Gorgon's doomsday ship? If you believe in me, you can do anything. Commander, I'm picking up the Gorgon ship. Sir, we are past the point of no return. Look at the size of that ship. Oh, my galaxy. Star note. Be calm, Quark. Be calm. Ficus, are we within their sensory contactors? Probably not, as they are very large and we are very small. We will be in a matter of moments, however. Oh, grut. Andy, don't swear. Go directly to Gorgon's ship. I know where you will be able to board safely. It's on the seventh quadrant, close to the power center. Betty? Yes? Head for the seventh quadrant. You are approaching a Gorgon vessel. Identify yourself. Don't answer it. Up speed, four points. I repeat, you are approaching a Gorgon vessel. You must identify yourself. Engage sensory deflectors. Deflectors engaged. Good. And in we go. Well, I hope no one gets hurt. Nothing to worry about, Gene. The source is with us. Nothing can stop us now. That's a very big ship. Fast, too. What are you saying? I have no idea. The high gorgon's awfully tough. I'm not sure now. What do you mean you're not sure now? I believed in you completely. Well, it's been 200 years since I was last out. You get rusty. Things change. Maybe it was the fourth quadrant. Oh, rot. 
Don't swear, Commander. I am the source. I am the source. Trust me. Trust me. <laughs> Vessel boarding, sub-level three. We've landed successfully inside the Gorgon ship. Oh, this has never happened to me before. We're in the seventh quadrant, and the power center is near the fourth quadrant? Is that what you're telling me? Well, are you mad? Don't be mad. Commander, it would appear two Gorgon guards are about to board the ship. We'll go out through the garbage hatch. Everyone set your guns for stun. Commander Quark. Commander Quark. Commander, listen. Freeze them in their tracks, huh? Go on, get out. Andy, you stay here and stall the guards. I'm no good at stalling. I'm good at escaping. You can do it, Andy. We're depending on you. The galaxy is depending on you. I wish to submit my resignation. Andy, that's an order. I am in a pickle. 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 I am in a... Hello. Where's the crew? I run this ship myself. I am your friendly garbage man. And you pick up Gorgon garbage. There is not good or bad garbage. There is only garbage. And you run this ship yourself. It's a snap. Let's see you work a few of these controls. Try the modulator. Modulator. No problem. <laughs> we'll take him to the high Gorgon. I have a better idea. Let's let me go. Ask me if I'm happy. the source dangerous? Only if it's on your side. All my life, I've dreamt about fighting the Gorgons. What about you? Are you talking to me? No, I'm talking to the wall. Oh. Of course I'm talking to you. Oh, I see the problem. This is very interesting. You did not use my given name, Ficus, thereby causing me to wonder if you were, in fact, addressing me. Ficus, I'm trying to ask you a question. What is your question? The next time your garbage isn't collected, think about this day. Almighty Gorgon, the United Galaxy garbage ship has boarded us. This robot claims to be running the ship itself. I heard a lot of good things about you. Is the source here on my ship? My name is Andy. My star code is 765736. I haven't destroyed. We've had a misunderstanding. The source is here. Who controls his power? You're asking me to squeal on a man who built me with his own two hands. A man who gave up his lunches in order to get my very parts. A man named Commander Adam Quark. The garbage man. Six feet tall, hair dark. I have a picture of him on this ship, if you'd like. Bring me Quark. And, oh, destroy the robot. Destroy? Do you know who you're dealing with? Yes, I know who I'm dealing with. I'm dealing with a cowardly android who would lie, cheat, grovel to save his own miserable, pathetic little existence. Well, so long as you know. <laughs> I just want you to know, she's the clone. That's not true. She's been the clone all along. Not now, Betty. Ficus, left or right? I know. Ficus? I know, Quark. Trust me. Will you be quiet? <laughs> Don't you use that tone with me. I am the source. I cannot be certain, Commander. I will go to the left. How does that sound? You don't need my help, Commander Know-it-all. <laughs> oh, oh. I knew about them. I could have told you about those guards. Hey, quick in here! What about Gene? We'll have to get him later. 
but a worthless coward, the scum of the universe, the lowest form of life. I deserve to be destroyed. Feel free to jump in and disagree any time. Quark. Shh. Quark, give me another chance. I've been in the orb for 200 years. Nobody's perfect. You don't expect me to sleep for 200 years and then get up and dance, do you? Shh. Ficus, how much further? Commander, like yourself, I've never been on this ship. I can only assume. I know. No, oh, I know this ship like the back of my hand. These corridors are like a maze. A man could be lost in here for years. Trust me, trust me. Right. You won't regret this call. We'll see. Betty's. Listen carefully. When we go to the power center, use this telecommunicator to contact Perma-1. Tell Palindrome not to surrender. Then try and find Gene, go back to the ship. If I'm not back in two hours, take off. But what about you? Forget about me. You were the strongest man I ever knew. And brave. He was not like a man. He was like a god. He uh, was Betty. better than a god. I'm going to miss him so much. Uh, Betty, will you, will you stop talking about me in the past tense? I'm not dead yet. He never will be in my heart. <clears throat> oh, mine. Enough already. This way. Right. <laughs> what do you mean, this way? Which way? What way? You're everywhere. <laughs> oh, sorry. Straight ahead. Sorry. Go on to the power center, I'll cover you. You think you can handle both of them yourself? Certainly. As a human, you become nervous. As a plant, I remain calm and cool, even in battle. Yes, but as a plant, you can never understand the human element so crucial in battle. True, Commander, but as... I just forget it! I'll go to the power center. You cover me. Exactly my original thesis, Commander. <laughs> Number is 887-942-605-143-79-L9168. Is that galaxy to galaxy or species to species? Species to species. Thank you. Just one moment, please. <laughs> Betty. What is it, Betty? We're on hold. <laughs> Told you I could get you to the power center. Aren't I something else? I'm just wild about me to think that you almost doubted me. What was that? Whatever you do, Quark, don't look down. Oh, my galaxy. I told you not to look down. <laughs> now what do I do? Blow it up. Blow it up with what? Didn't you bring the UTE bomb? What UTE bomb? I told you about the UTE bomb. You never mentioned the UTE bomb. I specifically told you. You did not. Did so. You did not. Did so. When? 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 I, I... Uh, well, I don't have any UTE bomb, so what am I supposed to do? The out for that god. <laughs> did I take care of that god? Huh? Huh? I can't see. You gotta trust me now, Paul. One is evacuated. We've lost all telemetry with Quark, and the Gorgon Doomsday ship is closing in on us. I'm afraid we might as well give up. Not so fast, Palindrome. We still have Quark. Uh, that's what I mean, sir. We might as well give up. Easy. Uh huh. That's it. Now you're almost there. Now just keep going. Good. Good. Now, a little to your left. A little to... No, no, I meant right! I can't see you, no! I meant right. Trust me. Why should I trust you? You're always wrong. 
Because I am the source. The source of what? I can't see. I'm standing on this light bridge. There's a thing down there that wants to eat my head. I don't think I need any more of your help. You quitter. I'm not exactly in a position to attack. I've lost my crew, and thanks to you, I don't have a UTE bomb to blow up the power center. The UTE bomb was your fault. You never mentioned a UTE bomb. I specifically remember telling you. Forget the bomb. Just get me off this bridge. <laughs> you want to know why you almost fell off before? Yeah, because you told me to go left when you really meant right. No. Why? Because you didn't really believe in me. You almost believed, but your heart flinched for an instant. I must put your faith to a test. A test? I don't want a test. If you really believe, your feet will move along one after another until they reach safety. Oh. If you do not believe, that thing will eat your head. <laughs> Source! I will not say another word. Source! Source? I believe. You really believe. Place you under a heat ray with no water. You'll soon talk and tell us where the source is. I am worried. I have never been destroyed before. This will work. I love to work. Take me home with you. I cook. I clean. I tell earthy stories. This should do it. I'll make it quick. Quick. Where's the fire? I am not in a rush. Now hold still. I am willing to grovel. Say your last words. I'd like to say I'm sorry to Commander Quark. He built me with his own hand. In order to save my own neck, I told on him and probably got him killed. I deserve to be destroyed. I'm all yours. Oh, are you all right? I'm sorry. Well, I'm not that sorry. See ya, sucker. Betty, we've got to get off home. I know I'm it, sorry. Betty. Perma One is busy now. Please stay on hold. For your enjoyment, we will show a short film about trout fishing on Pluto. Thank you. In early Plutonian spring, the warm red runoff from the Beldon mountain range... Betty, look! ...often spawn trout. Yes? In case there's any trouble, pretend like we don't know each other. Betty, I'm your clone. We're identical in every way. Talking for language. This is Ariel, Tarbahera, Mucho, Paraganer, Mucho Dinero. Are you two together? No! Okay, Vegeton. We want to know where the source is. Talk. You don't have much time. The time, of course, is relative. I don't believe him. What's true? What is time? Do we exist? Are there good times? Are there bad times? This, I would say, is a bad time. What is death? Do we die? Will you shut up? Quark, draw your gamma gun. I know I shouldn't ask this, but why? We've got to save Vicus. He's being held inside this room. Where? Over there. Good. That's it. That a boy. Quickly. Go on! You want me to barge into this room, gamma gun blasting, even though I can't see? I'm hot. I can feel it. Trust me. <laughs> it's impossible. If you believe in me, if you really believe... Don't move or I'll disintegrate you. A little more to the right. I mean left! Now, raise your arms quick. Sir, their arms are raised. I know that. Now, untie ficus. I said untie him. Sir, I am untied. I know that. Ficus, take this and cover them. I said cover them. Sir, I am covering them. I know that. You believe. <laughs> See, I told you. <laughs> 
sir. Perma-1 is completely evacuated. The High Gorgon ship will be in range of us within an hour. Sir, I love Perma-1. I was born here. I know every square inch of the space station by heart. Sir, I say we split. Split? Yes, yes. I've got a ship just loaded to the brim with the proper stimulating companions and ambrosia. We can sail away to some far-off galaxy. I'll hear no more of this talk. Face it, the end of the United Galaxy is here. I don't want to be captured. Quark will come through. Quark? Well, I mean, you've made some bad decisions in the past. Palindrome, do you know what you're saying? But sending Quark on this mission. Palindrome, I order you. You order me. Your troops are gone. Your ships are in retreat. We're equal. You and I equal? I order you, Palindrome, to stop talking. And if I don't listen to you, what can you do about it? Bite me? <laughs> I'm incredible. I was just a little rusty before. Pick up the pace a little, Quark. I'm going as fast as I can. Trust me, trust me. Sir, I just had a thought. What if we converted some crystalline lathusium gristatones by elongating an automatic nimbus? <laughs> I have two questions. First of all, why do you think about things like that? And secondly, what does that mean? <laughs> Normally, the crystalline lathusium gristatones are activated by a positive arc. But if the arc were negated, it's only logical that a vast combustion would be the result. Star note, it is only 20 minutes since my rescue of Ficus. A feeling of regret is beginning to set in. Ficus is right. Instead of going back to the ship, we can make a bomb. I know where to get the parts. Where is that? We've run into an ambush. Oh, source, it's not my fault. I was talking to you guys. Ficus, in simple words, what's your appraisal of the situation? Hopeless, sir. You threw my concentration off. I was doing great. I've had it with you. Sir, I can't hold him off much longer. I can't believe I'm doing this. I must have my wires crossed. Geronimo. <laughs> Andy charged into the Gorgons and drove them back. You charged into the Gorgons, Andy? I felt terrible. I told on you. I thought I got you killed. Well, it's all part of growing up. I think I'm having a warm moment with a robot. <laughs> Soon the Gorgons will be coming back. I suggest that we hide in an air vent I saw earlier. You mean you don't know each other? No! We just met when I got in line. See, a slobber dog. Come on, I'm in a hurry. I was getting hot. If I just hadn't made me think about making the bomb. I don't want to hear it. I don't believe in you. Did I ever tell you about the time I charged into ten gorgons? Andy, you were great. I'm a hero. I'm also a fool. Sir, look. Ficus, I can't see. The source appears to be fading, sir. He's our only means of getting the parts to make the bomb and locate the power center. You can't let him die. He doesn't believe in me. Source, I I'm sorry. Uh, I got angry, but I believe in you. No, you don't. He's fading fast, sir. Source, you got me into this. You can't die. I've no reason to live. You don't really believe in me. I believe in you. No, you don't. And neither does Ficus, and neither does Andy. Did I ever tell you about the time I charged into 20 Gorgons? He's almost gone, sir. Source, what can we do to help you regain your will to live? Maybe. Well, just maybe. If everyone really believed in me, I could live. Try cheering for me. You want us to cheer for you? Nothing fancy. Just a simple cheer, like we want the sauce. Ficus, Andy, we're going to cheer. We want the source. <laughs> we want the source. We want the source. You don't really mean it. More feeling. We want the source. We want the source. We want the source. Source will take care of him. He's coming alive, sir. Cheer harder. We want the source. The source. We want the source. He's alive, sir. I am the source. I can see. 
Ficus, are you sure this bomb will work? The conduction would appear to be regular. There is, however, the possibility that the original hypothesis of negating the crystalline lapisium gristletones will prove to be erroneous. I'm sorry I asked. I mean, with just a little encouragement, I've restored your sight, I've found the parts to make a bomb, and led you to the power center. It gives me goosebumps just to think how wonderful I am. Did I ever tell you about the time I charged 57 dreaded gorgons? It wasn't bad, Andy. Quiet! You'll get us caught. Sir, it's ready. What should I set the timer on? Uh, give it an hour. Nah, 20 minutes is plenty. Trust me, trust me. Set it for half an hour. <laughs> Chicken. <laughs> Back to the ship. I'm really something, aren't I? I don't mean to put down everything. You've done some good things. Palindrome, you're giving me such a headache. <laughs> Who is it? Who do you think it is? Gorgon. So, I finally meet the incredible head. Gorgon, I'm warning you. Oh, now he's warning him. G Gorgon the head is not himself. On behalf of the entire staff, we'd like to welcome you to Perma One. Silence! Anything you say. Surrender or die, head. I would rather die than live under your rule. Speak for yourself. As you wish, head. As you wish. The source will take care of you, Gorgon. The source? <laughs> Oh, you were beautiful. The man's scared to death. He's shivering in his boots. I would rather die than live under your rule. Let's see what some of your loving citizens think about that. Betty, we've gotten through. Betty? Quark North Caporado. No entre gar. What? Speak English. The Gorgons will hear us. Keep them busy. The heel on my boot is loose. <laughs> Do not surrender. I repeat, do not surrender. Quark has gotten through? So, Palindrome, you and I are equal? Oh, sir, you don't really think I meant that. Personally, sir, it's been a tremendous honor working under such a wise and understanding head. I was a fool to send Quark? Oh, such wisdom, such brilliance, sir. I love my job to err as human, to forgive divine. And if I don't forgive you? What are you going to do about it? Bite me? Exactly my feeling, sir. You took the words right off the tip of my tongue. Quiet, palindrome. Yes, sir. Oh, my galaxy. <laughs> We've almost given up hope. Come on, we have to hurry. The ship is going to explode in 17 minutes. Where's Gene? We thought he was with you. We checked everywhere. Uh, logically, Gene would probably go back to the ship. On the other hand, Gene is very thick. He could be anywhere. Back to the ship. Those sissies from the United Galaxy sure folded up quick. Just ignore them. Yeah, I thought they'd fight. Keep going. Nah, they don't have the stomach for fighting. Don't do it. Think they'll let us board Perma One? But better. I want to get a souvenir. Maybe one of those ugly heads. Do it! Purple one lives! Betty, prepare us to get out of here. We're waiting for James. There's no reason to panic, sir. We've still got 12 minutes. Let's panic. Let's get out of here. Source, why did you make me set the timer on half an hour? If you believe, if you really believe, Stay here. If I'm not back in four minutes, you blast off, and that's an order, sir. Ficus, don't argue! I'm not. Does that four minutes begin now, or has it been running concurrently with our conversation? Ficus, get on the ship now! Drop him! Don't move! Gene, you all right? Let's go. The garbage man! That's right, Gorgon. How'd you get through? I'm so leaving you! Believe me, it wasn't easy. Ah! Oh, God, 200 years ago, your great-great-great-grandfather didn't want me. He said a lot of cruel things. Now I'll have my revenge. No! Because of me, your doomsday ship will blow up in eight minutes. No! 
Quark, this is your moment of truth. If you believe in me, really believe, you will win this fight. I'd rather have a weapon. You don't need a weapon. Believe with all your heart and you will defeat Gorgon. The only thing I believe in is ducking. <laughs> You can't touch me, can you, Gorgon? You can touch me, stop going, you! I did it! I defeated Gorgon! I'm unbelievable! You defeated Gorgon? What about me? You weren't bad, but I was incredible. You only won because you really believed in me. I feel terribly vain. Get on the ship. <laughs> It's an exciting moment, isn't it, Commander? Yes, Ficus. I thought so. You're the fabulous, Eddie. You're the biggest hero in the history of the United Galaxy. I do my job. In my humble opinion, we owe a great deal of thanks to me. Let's hear it for me. Thank you very much. Gorgon, this is Gorgon. Gorgon? That's impossible. I escaped on my private space shuttle. Mark my words. I personally hold you responsible for destroying my ship. There was nothing personal. You were trying to take over the universe. You have to expect people to try and stop you. I'm going to get you. Oh. I will follow you to the ends of the universe. There is no place that you can hide. I will stop at nothing. Nothing. Excuse me. Excuse me. Star note. Oh, God! <laughs> I never lost my faith. Thank you, Palindrome. I just had to let you know that. I appreciate it, Palindrome. You've got a fan. Does this mean I might be promoted out of garbage? Don't be greedy, Quark. I saved the United Galaxy. Quark, and I mean this sincerely, a few more missions like this and I might just talk to the head. You're beautiful, Quark. A few more missions like this? <laughs> Quark, what do you want to do now? Source? It's time to go back into the orb. Back into the orb? I'm just getting hot. Sorry. You've got to go back in the orb. I don't want to go back into the orb. Last time it was 200 years. You can't always do everything you want. I don't want to go back into the orb. Didn't we have fun? Yes, we did. But it's time. You were the one who forgot the bomb. Source, don't go out like this. Go out strong and brave. Be the hero you really are. You think so? Yes. You don't want people saying you were afraid to go back in the orb, do you? No, I guess not. We were a great team, weren't we, Quark? We certainly were. Will you call on me again? Trust me. Trust me. Goodbye, Quark. I love you. And remember, I am the source. Quark, in recognition of your good work, loyalty, and perseverance, I hereby promote you to commander of your own starship. My own starship? What I've always dreamed of. Ah, uh, sir, much of the credit for my good work really belongs to my crew. I assume my crew is promoted with me. Quark, your crew will remain aboard the garbage ship. Sir, if my crew doesn't come with me, I'd rather not be promoted. Very well. The galaxy ad infinitum. Quark, that was the noblest thing I've ever heard. Also the dumbest. I didn't think you'd say very well. You don't say very well. You say sure. Take your crew with you. No, no, no. You'd say that. The head would say very well. That'll be all, Quark. Thank you. <laughs> Maybe someone would say, bring your crew later. But nobody would say, very well. Maybe, maybe I should have said, yes. Then discuss the crew. But you, you, can't, you can't just figure, very well. <laughs>
think? No, you're doing the dance right. It must be your personality the girls don't like. Teach you personality. Think that's so you think I can't teach you personality? It's just something I happen to have. <laughs> Good morning, Commanders. Well, shall we see what the head has in store for us today? Commanders, your assignments. Commander Haley, you will undertake a 30-year mission to the planet Java. Call when you arrive. <laughs> Commander Black, you will personally disarm all of the photon explosive devices left by the Gorgons on the planet Beldar. I don't believe it. Uh, uh, Commander Black. Uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, Commander Black, you're going to love Beldar. It's a lovely... Yeah. And Quark, pick up garbage. And Quark. Here it comes. You will spend an extended romantic interlude with a beautiful princess. Ah, I knew it. The galaxy ad infinitum. <laughs> Same. Wait a minute. I got a princess. Hey, hey, hey. I got a princess! Hey! Hey! I know the slightest breeze can set off a photon explosive, but you'll survive somehow. How? Tiptoe. Oh, God. <laughs> Uh, oh, yes, 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 I know. You've always gotten me a good price on Ambrosia, and I'm grateful. But what can I do? The head gave you the assignment, not me. Don't take that tone of voice to me, Commander. Alondro, hmm? the head just gave me a most fantastic mission. What's the catch? Quark, I'm not supposed to tell you this, but the head is thinking of promoting you. He is? Yes, and it's all hinging on my recommendation. And so far, Quark, I'm not very impressed. Well, give me a chance. This extended romantic interlude, is it supposed to be with any particular princess? I can't tell you that. Well, where am I supposed to go? There are a lot of princesses out there. I'd like to, but it's top secret. You'll be informed as soon as your ship enters the Kazir Space Corridor. Well, so long, Palindrome. Hello. Wish me luck. Star Note. I got a princess! <laughs> Emotionally, I won't feel a thing. It's strictly a mission, and Betty's... I mean this from the bottom of my heart. Whatever happens between me and that princess happens for the good of the United Galaxy. Do you believe me? No. Frankly, I've heard better. Andy. It was a little lame, Commander. This isn't a group meeting to discuss my love life. I'm talking to the Bettys. You could have said no, Adam. Sure, if I wanted to be selfish, but I was thinking of you. If I do this mission right, you, me, all of us are going to have our own starship. Our own starship? Thanks, but no thanks. Betty's, I've dreamed about having a starship all my life. I've dreamed, I've dreamed, I've dreamed of getting off this ship all my life. Commander, I'm sorry to interrupt the most important moment of Say, your life. Say, Ficus, but... did you hear the news? We might be getting rid of this garbage heap and get some real star speed. Gene, as I'm a vegeton, I don't care either way. Who are you? Hold me back, Commander, hold me back. Gene, I am. I'm holding you. Oh, I... Sir, there's a space baggie dead ahead. Space baggie? There isn't a settlement within four parsecs of here. Why would there be a space baggie? Maintain speed. Maintaining speed, Commander. Extend claws. Claws extending. No. That's it. This is a critical period. Ease it in. Now, Adam. Contact, sir. We have a grab. I repeat, we have a grab. We have a grab. Adam, no commander does the grab as well as you. I'm proud to be under your command, sir. Thanks, Gene. We have a problem, sir. The garbage hatch won't close. It seems to be jammed. I'll go below and check on it. Hey, Space Ranger. Hey, how you doing, girls? Oh, hey, 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 I'm a sensitive guy. I know how you feel. You're worried that this beautiful princess is going to win over the commander with her power, money, and looks? Ah. Think we're overreacting, Gene? No, nah, not at all. I might be scared to death. Thanks a lot, Gene. Hey, anytime you want to talk. Hey, what do you say, Ficus? Our own starship, huh? Where are we going to have us some times? <laughs> Time is a continuum, Gene. Right, space buddy. Hey, listen, let's make sure this mission goes without a hitch, huh? No mistakes. Where I come from, we have a saying about mistakes. Ergo limprium von inter revoltum. Yeah, well, hey, don't go vegeton, you know? That was a rough one, but I fixed the garbage hatch. Here, Adam, let us help you. Oh, oh Adam! Commander! You look 10 years older. 
How could this happen? What's my condition, Ficus? I've got to know. Sir, it would appear you were upset. That I know. I want to know why I came out of that hatch 10 years older than when I went down. One explanation might be you were down there 10 years. Ficus, I was down there five hours. Well, that would rule out that theory. I'll have to check my results, but my assumption is you caught a virus. Uh, a virus? Uh, could I catch that virus? I don't like viruses, Ficus. Commander, it's definitely a virus, one that is aging you at the rate of two years every hour. As a matter of fact, you just aged another year. Happy birthday, Adam! Ficus, how did I get this virus? From that stray space baggie we picked up. Ficus, you have to find a cure. Sir, transmute blood is extremely resistant to disease. If we could give you a transfusion of Gene's blood. Uh, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ch check the reactors, Commander. I'm with you, I'm with you all the way. Gene, you've got to! I'm not gonna connect myself with a virus. Are you crazy? No way! Is that a fly? I'm not gonna do it. I don't wanna be old. I'm too handsome, too strong. I hate to be so violent. <laughs> Wake up. Oh. Oh, no! Gene, it's okay. You can't catch the virus. Your blood is flowing into me. My blood is what? Hold on, Gene. It's almost done. Relax, Commander. Helping others is the part of space I love. Commander, I hate to interrupt you in the middle of a transfusion, but Palindrome is calling you on the telescreen. Palindrome mustn't know about the virus, Ficus. I don't need help. Working with the aged. Ah, how rewarding. Hello, Palindrome. Gort, here are your orders. The baby with the booty brought the body with the baggie. Palindrome, I don't know what you're talking about. Quark, are you all right? You look a little tired. No, no, I'm fine. Quark, you do this mission right, and that promotion's yours. Uh, did he say the baby with the baggie, or was it the body with the booty? Hmm? See, the... First... <laughs> See, first means destroy yourself. The other way means come home Randy. There's a big difference. <laughs> Ficus, did you understand anything Palindrome said? I did have my back to the screen and was deeply engrossed in my calculations. Uh -huh. Anything I might say would be purely conjecture. Uh -huh. Maybe I ought to sit down for this. You are sitting down, sir. I know that. I'm the commander. <laughs> Wing it, Ficus. Winging it, sir, I would say that the head has completed a treaty with Camomore. Kakama. Yes, a planet long coveted by the dreaded Covet. Gorgons. Gorgies. Your mission yeah. is to guarantee the signing of Sci the treaty Sci by completing an extended romantic Sci interlude with the ruler of Camomore, ruler. Princess Karna. <laughs> I already had an interlude with the Princess Karna. How considerate of Palindrome to reunite you, sir. Yes, 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 yes. The women of Camomore are known for their passions. Camomorian men never live past 25. Most never survive the honeymoon. As the human being that you are, you should enjoy this. Yes, 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 yes. yes. When I was young and strong, Princess Karna almost killed me. <laughs> what will happen to me in this condition? Nothing. Nothing? No. No. Really? The transfusion failed. Failed? Yes. Ah. At the rate you're aging, long before you reach Princess Karna, yes. you'll be dead. Dead? Yes. Starnote, Ficus could use some work on his bedside manner. There is another cure. Oh, let's try it. If it works, it could kill the virus. Kill the virus. If it doesn't, it could kill you. Kill me. Yeah. <laughs> Fifty. Now, let me understand this. You're going to send an electrical current through my body that will kill the virus. Ficus, have you ever done this before? Yes, sir. Good. On plants to kill black root fungus. Black root fungus? I'm not a plant, I'm a human being. Did you feel pain, sir? No, I was singing. Oh, why would one sing? 
Ficus, I felt pain. Good. Then it's working. Hello, Adam Quark. This is Princess Karna. Oh, my galaxy. I've requested that the head send you so that I may once again experience your masculine strength and power. As you know, I adore men who possess such qualities. All of my late husbands did. So hurry. 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 If only I could. Hi, uh, Gene, this is Palindrome. Hi, how are you? Just fine. Is Commander Quark there? We're in the middle of space. Where else would he be? Just get him for me, please. Hey, Commander, it's for you. Hold on, he'll be right with you, Space Ranger. <laughs> Palindrome, I seem to have hit a little snag on this mission. What snag? And, and, and will, you, will you move into view? Quark, look at you. You're so old. What happened? Uh, I caught this virus. Well, but how could you do this? What's Princess Karna going to think? I'm not going to make it to Princess Karna. The Gorgons are courting her. If we lose this ally to the Gorgons... They are working on a cure. Ficus already tried transfusion and an electrical process, but it didn't quite work. Oh, great. The fate of the Alliance depends upon a plant curing a virus. He's a smart plant. Quark, I want you to hear this recommendation I wrote for you. Uh, sure, Quark is unqualified, but if I work with him closely, giving him the benefit of my knowledge, my experience, my general space savvy, I'm sure I can pull a starship commander out of the cocoon of Adam Quark. That's a wonderful recommendation. <laughs> Does that mean he isn't going to recommend you? Do I look like a good recommendation? Adam, you've got to ingest. You need the energy. <laughs> what is that? Mashed alkali with soft galactic yeast. Did you like it? Too lumpy. <laughs> you know, stranger? The food here is rotten. I can't believe this. We finally get a chance for our own starship, and the commander blows it. It's not Adam's fault he's dying. I'm not so sure about that. Did you lose something? <laughs> what was that? Adam liked it. You mean the commander ate from that? That's right. I'm gonna die. Yo, Toe? Commander, my light's flashing before my eyes. Beating up my first Gravulite. Buying my first dress. <coughs> Joining the cadets. Dating a cadet. Killing my first Gorgon. Nursing the wounded. Aw, oh, sure, I've made mistakes. But the heck with it. I've gotta be us. Attention, attention. A fleet of Gorgon ships is preparing to attack. If you need me, forget it. I'll be on the bridge, Commander. We're gonna get us some Gorgies. Come on, Bettys. Sonny. Yes, sir. Who are the Gorgies? They're our dreaded arch enemy. Sir, your mind is slipping. You've got to understand they'll try and destroy us. I understand. I'm okay. Oh. Sonny! What is it, sir? Who are the Gorgies? Commander, the Gorgons are in range. Your instructions. Instructions! Yeah, of course, instructions. Set course reading, uh, one, two, seven. Commander, that'll put us right in their pocket. Is that bad? Does that answer your question? Adam Quark has never lost a battle. You there! Change course to one, five. No! Make that one, seven. Commander, you're obviously unfit to command this ship. I'm taking over. You are? Commander, you're not listening to me. Look at you. You're not capable of running this ship. 
Maybe I'm not. Sir, our digital scanners reveal that the Gorgons have just accelerated into my Beneal Woldenite Magnetorp. I guess when I'm in charge, you're gonna talk like everybody else. You got that? This young... This young fella is right. I'm giving up command for the safety of all. You mean I'm taking over? <laughs> if you're taking over, I'm getting off. No! I may be old, but I'm not crazy. As the second-ranking officers, the Bettys are taking command. What was that about not being crazy? Those two? You can't do this to me, Commander. I ain't taking orders from no clone. Mm -mm. In that case, Gene, you'll take all your orders from me. Don't listen to her, Gene. She's the clone. Life is like a fountain, Alex. My name is not Alex. Gorgon chip, 9.5 in closing. Prepare to fire lasers. No, bring up the deflector shield. Make up your mind. The only things they can make up are their faces. I say shields, lasers. Life is like a laser, Alec. Your mind has slipped. Gorgon chip, 8.7 in closing. This is quite an adventure. I hate adventure. Buddy, what are we going to do? I don't know, Betty. Life. Is like a Betty, Alex. Oh, Grot, my name is Andy. Don't swear, Alex. Sir, take it from Alex. These face heads will get us killed. Your ship is in danger. My ship, my crew, my life. My life, yes. I'm in command here. Now, what's your name? Bicus Pandorata, sir. You'll get over that, sailor. <laughs> Put plan green. Maneuver DL-17 into effect. Gorgon ship 7.9 are in closing. Okay, Betty's. When he gets in range, blast the buggers. Yes, sir. <laughs> Betty, fire. <laughs> Got him. I'm going to miss my Adam when he's gone. He was my Adam. He was my Adam. No, he wasn't. He was mine. Prepare to fire. Fire. Got him! Good work, Betty. Way to go. Commander, we got those stinking gorgeous ones and Betty's just good work. I'm with you, Commander. Here comes Karna. Betty, when you transport me down, Make it someplace soft and comfortable. Oh, Adam, you're so brave to face that awful Princess Carn in your condition. It's my only chance to command a starship. Oh, Adam, I feel so close to you, knowing that in only a matter of minutes you'll be dead. Betty, I'll never see you again. I have to know. Which one's the clone? Shoes! I go. Zachary, look! Oh, my galaxy! Princess Karna, there's an old man in your tub. Adam, is that you? Yes, it's me. And I have to ask you a favor. Would you sign the treaty? Oh, Adam, for you, I would do anything. Oh, thank you. Adam, yeah? you've changed. You're old. What's that? I said you're old. Old, oh, yes, yes. You noticed. <laughs> I knew you'd be angry. Angry with you, Adam. <sighs> how can I be angry when I know how fantastic you are? Fantastic? <laughs> I can't even get out of this tub. Oh, let me help you. Mm. Ladies? <clears throat> Ladies? <laughs> No, no. Easy. You must be a little disappointed to find me older than you expected. <laughs> um. 
no, no, Adam, not at all. As a matter of fact, I find it very exciting. You find it exciting? Hmm? You... <laughs> you find it exciting? I've never spent a romantic interlude with a man over 25 before. My luck. Adam, <laughs> this is going to be the best interlude ever. You may leave. Thank you. I meant my handmaidens. Maybe they'd like to stay a while. We can play four-handed space rummy. <laughs> oh! Adam? Uh -huh. Oh, Adam. Oh, my galaxy. Over here. Uh -huh. When you talk about this, and you will, be kind. Well, time to pick up the commander's bones, Ficus. You'll be pleased to know that I finally synthesized a serum to counteract Commander Quark's virus. A well, fat lot of good that's going to do him now that he's passed on the big starship in the sky. This is Princess Karna. Yes, this is Commander Quark's ship. Are you ready to transport your commander? Yes, just place his body in the clear area and step back. Eddie's. Ficus, hit the switch. All clear. Oh, Adam, you're not dead! Very good, Betty. You must have been terrible down there. You don't know the half of it. But the alliance is secure. Congratulations, sir. A mission completed. I knew you could do it. Our own starship. Please be seated, sir. Phaeton torpedoes, gamma blasters, ultralight speed. Now those Gorgons won't have a chance. I'm going to call Mom and Dad, Dad and Mom. Oh, Adam, you're fantastic. That's the second time today someone told me that. <laughs> sir, there's hardly a trace of the virus. Oh? May I ask if, while you were on Camomore, you did anything out of the ordinary? You could say that. And your blood pressure, did it increase? Oh, okay. yeah. And your breathing? Very rapid at times. Then I would say that your extended romantic interlude with Princess Karna mm -hmm. brought about changes in your body chemistry oh. that temporarily reversed the effect of the virus. Oh. However, it did not destroy it altogether. No. 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 I've still got it. Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. How do I get rid of it? There are two possible ways. Two? Yes. Wow. One is another extended romantic interlude lasting seven days. Seven? Yes. Oh, Adam! The other is this. What's this? Well, that was a serum that I synthesized. Oh. It should destroy the virus in ten seconds. Ten? Yes. Mm. Oh, ficus! Eddie, take us home. Star note, 2216. On the way to Camomore to complete my mission, I was invaded by a virus, transfused by a transmute, attacked by gorgons, electrocuted, and nearly died of old age. And to think, this was the best assignment I ever had.
Oh, come on, Dink. You're a good-looking guy. Every species has trouble with commitment. Take it from me, there are plenty more gravulites where she came from. <laughs> Anytime, fella. Palindrome! Oh, war! I'd like you to meet Commander Kroll. He just got back from defeating a Bloton Brigade. Of course, Commander Kroll. I read about that in the periodical. And this is Commander Stark. She just finished stealing the Gorgon defense plan. Commander Stark, I've always wanted to meet you. I read about your efforts in Prima Report. What have you been doing, Commander Quark? Ah, uh, let's see. Well, I've been reading about you guys a lot. And, uh... Quark commands our garbage ship. He's very good at it. Oh, so you're in garbage. No. That must be very uh, interesting. Well, not really. There's not a lot to say. Da! Tell him about the time you couldn't get your garbage hatch to open, so you had to go down there personally with your space tools. And... Well, Palindrome, I don't think these two really... I actually, it was kind of... <laughs> Funny. You see, I couldn't get my hatch open, so I had to get my own... It is getting late, palindrome. Yeah, oh, that's right, yes. The head will be waiting. <laughs> Come for it. See the darn hatch. <laughs> well, Quark, you just have to tell the commanders your story some other time. I can't wait. Commander Crew, you will free the hostages on the planet Novacell. Commander Stark, you will destroy the runaway comet. In Sector 3 and Warg. Garbage. The galaxy ad infinitum. Star note. My mission to boldly seek out grime and grit, to collect the uncollectible space baggie, to always leave the area cleaner than when I found it. Come in. I gotta talk to you about Ficus. What about Ficus, Gene? I don't know. I, I just don't know. What do you think? I didn't bring it up, Gene. I really don't know what you're trying to say. Yeah, me too. Like this morning, he had a gauge in his ear. Although I should learn to be more tolerant, Ficus is weird. <laughs> Ficus is weird. Adam, what do you think of my new outfit? What do you think of my new outfit? They're very nice. Ficus, what do you think of the Betty's new outfits? They would appear to be 20% Filmar, 50% Raelium, with a certain amount of... Ficus, forget the fabric content. What's your opinion? Excuse me, I misunderstood. They're terrible. Ficus! <laughs> Insensitive plant! Uh, uh, Ficus, even if you didn't like their outfits, you should have said something nice. But, Commander, that would be a lie. I mean, where can they possibly hold their gamma guns or protect themselves from the heat and cold? Look how little material there is. I know. You see, Ficus... Humans sometimes lie in order to protect feelings. That's true, Commander, but protected feelings are false feelings. That's true, Ficus, but to humans, false feelings feel good. <laughs> Say, Ficus, why is there a gauge on your ear? Well... Commander, I'm picking up something on my scanner. I can't make it out. This ship has just bumped into ultralight. Something out there is pulling us forward. Why, Ficus? Sir, are you referring as to why the gauge on my ear or why this phenomenon is occurring? The phenomenon, thank you. I thought so. I must point out that my calculations are not complete as this problem has just surfaced. Ficus, give it to me straight. Giving it to you straight, all signs point to us being sucked into a black hole. I don't want to be sucked into a black hole. Ficus, are we in big trouble? The biggest. Relax, Gene. We've been sucked into a black hole. I don't want to be sucked into a black hole. That's what I said. Oh, Grot. Don't swear, Andy. I'd rather be a maid. Ficus, in your estimation, can the ship handle this pressure? No. Is this one of those times I should have lied? Yes. I thought so. Uh, can we activate the scanner to see what the inside of a black hole looks like? Activate scanner. Commander, I, I've dreamt of dying my whole life, but not in a black hole. Let's slingshot out of here. Gene, I'll give the orders. Commander, for your own good, I'm taking over command of this ship. Gene, stop it. Ficus, let me know when the pressure reaches zero. Commander, you're not listening to me. I said I'm declaring you unfit to command. Gene, not in the middle of a black hole. I'm sorry, Commander. I didn't mean to question your authority. That's all right, Gene. Must have been a blow to your male ego. You've all been in space too long. Sir, the pressure is approaching zero. There's nothing we can do. The ship will explode any second. Explode? I don't want to explode. Adam, look how beautiful it is. Isn't it romantic, Adam? Romantic? What do you mean, romantic? Let's get out of here. But it is beautiful. 
Look at all those pretty colors. Colors? Who gives a space wall about colors? Let's blast out of here! Attention does strange things to you, doesn't it, Gene? Everything does strange things to Gene, Adam. Sir, look, the pressure's coming back. We must be passing through the black hole. Focus! We're going to live! I am thrilled. Starship Maya, this is Adam Quark, standing by to receive your garbage. Prepare to eject load. Roger. We have you on our scanner, Quark. Opening hatches. Prepare to receive load. <laughs> uh, Dink, what's going on? I'm sound asleep. Dink, 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 how many times do I have to tell you? Enunciate. You mean the head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff is here? Oh, boy. If Admiral Flint's around, this must be big. Admiral Flint. Uh, we're waiting, palindrome. Oh, uh, yes, Admiral Flint. Uh, what seems to be the problem? I demand an audience with the head. Oh, I couldn't bother the head at this hour without knowing why. Palindrome, you get me the head. Now, on the other hand, you wouldn't want the head without good reason. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry to bother you, sir. Were you thinking? What else can I do, palindrome? I'm not that good an athlete. <laughs> not that good an athlete. <laughs> Head, Admiral Flint here. What is it, Admiral? The finest ship in my fleet, the battleship Maya, has been obliterated, knocked out of the galaxy, and I want to know who did it. I think we should take everything we've got, throw it against him. I want this animal caught. Yeah, Admiral Flint, Adam Quark is one of the most alert, wide awake, aware, on top of it commanders in our entire fleet. And you should see how active he keeps his crew. Yes, they're always ready for any situation. Tireless magicians of space and muck. Ficus, see who's calling us. Yes, sir. Oh, and Ficus, why is that gauge in your ear? Because it is imperative that I... Mark, you are to return to Perma-1 at once. Palindrome, you seem awfully serious. Is something wrong? Look at him, playing innocent. You traitor! Traitor? What are you talking about? We've just taken our naps. Oh, look at him, taking a nap. Admit it! You're a Gorgon sympathizer. Who is that? Quark, the Maya's been blown up, and they say you did it. What? <gasps> That's ridiculous! We haven't even reached the Maya yet. You haven't even reached the Maya. Quark, watch this scan back. Can you explain that, Quark? Palindrome. Uh... Quark, return to Perma 1. That's an order. I don't understand. I saw it, but I don't believe it. I love you all, but if there is any trouble at Perma 1, I've never seen any of you before in my life. You pipe down. We gotta stick by the commander in his hour of need. Thank you, Gene. I appreciate that. Yeah, at least until we get you back to Perma One for your court martial. Adam, was it really you who blew, blew up, up the Maya? No. I mean, yes. I mean, uh, Ficus, uh, this is just a thought. But could it be possible that passing through that black hole in any way caused this to happen? I cannot be sure for certain, but in my personal opinion, I'm certain that I'm not sure. Ficus, what does that mean? Can't you just say yes or no? Yes. Yes what? Yes, I can say yes or no. I know we didn't blow up that ship. I'm innocent. I hold here in my hand an essay written by Adam Quark in the second grade. I would like permission to read it and enter it officially into the record. Permission granted. Thank you, sir. In the second grade, Quark wrote the following. My daddy is big and strong. He always talks about the evil Gorgons. I think they sound funny. Oh. Funny? The Gorgons? Funny? I see nothing humorous about the arch enemies of our universe and our way of life with freedom and justice for all. <laughs> Well, Admiral Flint, Quark was seven years old. The Gorgons get them young, Palindrome. Oh, never thought of that. <laughs>
Get them young, of course, sir. Just knowing there are men like you makes me feel secure. Oh, quiet, palindrome. I could go on and on, but is there any doubt in this room that Quark is a Gorgon sympathizer? No! Would anyone care to speak in favor of Quark? Uh, well, Quark doesn't go around blowing up ships. <laughs> He's not that creative. <laughs> I've just learned that, that Quark has destroyed my battleship Luna. I demand an all-out attack on Quark! This doesn't sound like Quark, but I'm afraid I don't have much choice. <laughs> Silence! Quark has served the United Galaxy well. His mind must have snapped. Space does strange things to men. Uh, perhaps the strain of too many garbage runs. We shall have a moment of silence in Quark's honor. All right, Flint, blow Quark out of the universe. <laughs> Ficus, what is the gauge doing in your ear? Interesting you should ask that, Gene. You see, as a vegeton, there are certain requirements that I have. Commander, I'm picking up another ship. Identification? It looks like a United Galaxy Sanitation Patrol ship. Sir, its markings are exactly the same as ours. Bring their commander up on the telescreen. Jump in spaces. That's you, Commander. Start out. This has been a very unusual day. Ficus, what's going on? It's obvious, Commander. Yeah, well, it ain't to me. That black hole we passed through was an anti-universe. What you're seeing is your opposite, your anti-self. Anti-self? I thought it was tough being a transmute. Commander, from what I've observed, I'd say you're face to face with evil Adam Quark. Listen to the plant, Quark. I'm going to destroy you. <laughs> Coward, run! I've always hated Quark. This time, victory will be mine. I heard this before, Adam. Your good sight always whips you, baby. Always. Not this time, clone. I ain't no clone. I don't understand this. What's going on around here? It's obvious, Gene. What we're seeing is the classic example of the Molestrian theory of duplication caused by the divisibility of Spolmedic space. That explanation What's makes me... What's wrong with you? Commander, let's chop Ficus up into a little salad. Gene, if anyone chops up Ficus, it'll be me. I can't stand it anymore. I gotta kill something. Then start with Quark. I want six KM-190s to go after Quark. Right here. Six KM-190s? Admiral Flint, be reasonable. Quark commands a garbage ship. Make a note of that. Auto palindrome defending a Gorgon sympathizer during an emergency. What? Quark is calling me? Huh? I'll take him the office. Make a note of that, too. It wasn't me, it was my evil side. Your evil side? Yes, I'm in a battle with myself right now. You're in a battle with yourself? I told him you weren't a Gorgon, Quark. Crazy, yes. Gorgon, no. I wasn't sure if you were going to believe me. I told him you needed a little time off, a little rest. But oh, no, Admiral Flint has to send the entire fleet out to destroy you. They're going to destroy me? Oh, I wasn't supposed to tell you, Quark. That slipped out. Palindrome, you got to stop them. Oh, Yo, promise me you won't tell. I could get into big trouble. You could get in big trouble. I'm going to be destroyed. Quark. Do you know what's at stake here? Yes, my life. Something much more important, my job. You gotta help me. I'm telling you, I'm attacking myself at this very moment. Quark, please. Palindrome, if you don't defend me, I'm gonna tell about your little slip-up. Quark, I can't go in there and tell them about your evil side. They'll think I'm crazy. It's a terrible career move. <laughs> Quark, Quark, don't do this to me. Starno. While being attacked by myself, I've learned that all the forces of the United Galaxy have been sent to destroy me. It's moments like this that make me realize it isn't very pretty what a galaxy without pity can do. <laughs> Star note. Being out of the black hole is fun. I can't remember being this loose and jolly. Adam has an evil side. You never told us, Adam. How exciting. 
Ficus, program maneuver plan red. Yes, sir. Gene, give me as much power as you can. Yes, sir. Ficus, program attack plan red. Yes, sir. Gene, give me more power, I'll break your face. Commander, you're such a spacehead. I'm taking over command of this ship. Try it, transmute, and your space jelly. <laughs> No use. We're both making the same moves at the same time. It's like shooting into a mirror. Betty, get me Commander Quark. Well, what else should I call him? He's coming up on the screen, Commander. Quark. Quark, if this battle continues, we are both going to lose. We'll blow each other up. You're breaking my heart. It's not me I'm worried about. It's my crew. Maybe we should get together and have a dance. Don't you wise off to the commander like that? Gene. I don't care if you're the commander's evil side. You don't scare me. Gene, I... You, you try anything and we'll splat on that ugly face of yours from here to ask both four. You got that? Gene, you're, 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 you're talking about my face. Oh, sir. <laughs> Quark, I propose that we meet face to face. Just you and me? That's right. We'll meet at a neutral spot. The Phalax asteroid. One on one? Exactly. And no weapons. <laughs> I like it. A fight to the death on the Phalax asteroid. A, a, a fight to the death? I didn't say a fight to the death. I said a meeting. <laughs> We're closing in on Quark. One minute. <laughs> uh, everybody, everybody, uh, can I have your attention, please? Uh, just for a minute, please. Uh, um, uh, well, well, things aren't always what they seem. Life's funny that way. <laughs> uh, yeah. Life's funny that way. Uh, yeah, well, uh, what I'm trying to say is that uh, um, everybody has a good side and an evil side. Uh, good and evil? <laughs> I'm dying, aren't I, sir? Yes, palindrome. Well, I tried. Admiral Flint, I'm closing in on Quark. Nail him, Jordan, nail him. But, Admiral, there's a problem. There are two Quarks. Two Quarks? Admiral, hold your fire till we get to the bottom of this. Hold my fire? Hold my fire! I've got six KM-190s, two Z-240s, and eight full-time death cruisers. Now, what do you want them to do? Have a prayer breakfast? Admiral, I order you to hold your fire. Oh, but you heard Quark's essay. The man's obviously a Gorgon. Flint, you're too much. The next thing I know, you'll be accusing me of being a Gorgon. Check up and see if you can find any of the heads old essays, would you? <laughs> Anyone hear me say a fight to the death? Oh, Adam, this is the bravest thing any man has ever done. To think that I can tell people that I once knew Adam Quark, a man who fought a fight to the death. I never said a fight to the death. I said a meeting. Resolve our conflicts in open and honest discussion. Ficus. Yes, Gene. Define the issues. Throw the switch. Come to terms. Chat with each other. Get to know one another as people. A mutual ground on which to base an understanding. Quark, you're not being fair. All right, Quark. I couldn't be more fair than this. Choose your weapon, gun or dagger. All right, that's better. The gamma gun. Good choice, Quark. Hello. Don't hello me, you creaky bucket of old. I hear a familiar voice. How's this for a familiar voice? Are you my evil side? I ain't a toaster, you goody-goody droid. Thanks for clearing that up. You are a pitiful, creaky excuse for an android. I agree completely. Come on, Betty. We'll watch the commander on the telescreen. I wouldn't go near there. Betty, it's us! You know, I thought you space bimbos were lame. Hey, wait a minute, you can't talk to our Bettys that way. I happen to like it. Who you calling a space bimbo, bimbo? I didn't say that, you did. This is a fascinating experience, isn't it? Greetings. Yes, it's very interesting to clear up many of the questions I've had regarding the effects of Manifian logic on the construction of some... Ficus! ...when applied to diadetic conforms. Ficus! Exactly. What's going on? You like your evil side? Correction, Gene. There are no good or evil plants. There are only plants. Hey. <laughs> Blasting you is going to be a pleasure, Quark. Inside of me, I've always hated the good side. I'm going to get you, or my name isn't Adam Quark. If it weren't for you, I couldn't have Mary Haskins all myself. But 
that you can't play she's married. Don't do it. Now it's my turn to get even for all those times you got me into trouble at the educational center by writing bad words on the walls. You didn't even know how to spell them. I did, too. You did not. Liar. Churchgoer. Villain. Hero. Get up. I knew you didn't have it in you. I would have pulled that trigger without batting an eye. That's what separates you and me. I have character, strength, moral fiber, yes. Which is why you're no fun at parties. I don't have to take any more from you. I've got the gun. Call your crew and have them beam us up to your ship. So, Quark, what now? I dismantle your weapon systems and your reactor, and I send you back to your black hole. Quark, maybe we can work out a deal. No deals, Quark. Where I come from, we believe that goodness and honesty are virtue, not deceit and villainy. How cute. <laughs> goodness will always triumph over evil. It's the foundation of our confederacy. I'd rather be dead than hear this. Wherever men strive to help their fellow men, wherever one lonely voice cries out, I'm beginning to get homesick for my black hole. Don't worry, Quark. You'll be home soon enough. Transport me aboard, Gene. We're taking these guys back in. Betty, how's the tractor beam holding up? Tractor beam on target, Commander. We're approaching the black hole, Commander. We're here, Commander. All right. Let her go! Star note, keep your deflectors up, do-gooder. You haven't seen the last of this face. Hey! Hey, I'm one proud space jockey, Commander. You were mighty tough with that guy. Well, Gene, Sometimes you just have to be firm with yourself. Palindrome. Smooth, Quark. Very smooth. But I smell gorgies. And one of these days, you're going to slip, and then I'll crush you. Do I know you? <laughs> You a Gorgon? That's ridiculous. Sorry, Dink. We're committed. Uh, yes, Quark? Palindrome, well, I'm sorry about all this trouble. You're sorry? Just for destroying two of our finest ships? For costing us over three billion round ones? These things happen in space. What would you have done if you were in my shoes? Ficus, for the last time, why the gauge in the air? Well, it's very simple. You see, this time of year, vegetons have a tendency to lose their moisture, causing my legs and lower torso to become brown and brittle. Your torso becomes brown and brittle? If I'm not careful, yes. This gauge monitors my moisture content. And here's the interesting point. You see, by alternating my interpithers with my outer... Again with the big words! I am able to perform a punctuary symbiotic but what subversion... what a remarkable vocabulary! Super thematic... <laughs> And I think and you Quark, this the if I were in your shoes, I'd have dropped this whole crew off down the black hole. Star note, I admit they may be somewhat unique, but they are mine. You're the clone. Come on, I'm not the clone. What do you say we all get a... On the other hand, I personally would put it... Uh...
Hi. Yes, I'm Commander Quark. You're Freddy Estro? Of course I remember your dad. I babysat for you when you were 12 feet tall. That was a long time ago. My goodness, you've really shortened well. I'll bet you hear that all the time. How old are you now? 13 years old. And you're just out of the cadets and you're gonna get your first assignment, huh? There's nothing to worry about. Good morning, Commander Walker. You're just in time for the briefing. The time for the briefing, sir, is zero, niner, four, two, exactly. Don't let Walker scare you. Commanders, you may enter. Excuse me. Don't slouch. I have this theory. In facing the head, it depends on how you stand. If he senses any weakness, he won't give you a good assignment. Knock it off, Quark. Nobody likes you, Walker. Well, Commanders, let's see what the head has in store for us today, shall we? Commander Walker. Yes, sir. You will be my representative at the Ambrosia Tasting Festival. I'd go myself, but Ambrosia goes straight to my head. Yes, sir. It will be done, sir. Stand up straight. Commander Estro, as you know, space is the final frontier. Yours is a five-day mission to explore strange new worlds and seek out new civilizations. Not bad to go exploring on your very first assignment. Oh. And Quark. Yeah. We have reason to believe that the dreaded Gorgons are behind a dastardly plot concerning the planet Columbus. Your mission is to determine why no person has ever returned from Columbus alive. It's a task you could call suicidal. Suicidal? Good luck. The galaxy ad infinitum. Palindrome. <laughs> oh, Dink, uh, let, let me help you with that. Sorry. No, I don't mind suicide missions. <laughs> you did well, Fred. <laughs> no, your posture was very good. Say hi to your dad. Get together from alive. That's cute, Fred. Cute. <laughs> why me? Because you're the best, Quark. That's why. If I'm the best, why am I still shooting around the galaxy in a used garbage ship? Why don't I have the best starship? Uh, there are some missions for which a starship would be too obvious, too fast, too powerful. But who'd suspect an out-of-date garbage scowl with obsolete weapons and a crew that is, how should I put it, unique? Palindrome. Eight commanders have been sent to investigate Columbus. All of them have mysteriously disappeared, vanished right out of the galaxy. Do you know why those eight others never returned? Bad attitude. Palindrome, please. No, I'm not kidding, Quark. I'm absolutely serious. It's a question of attitude. Oh, sure, we've all heard the same stories. Uh, black holes, space warps, anti-universes. Anti-universes? There you go again, Quark. Watch that negative attitude. Palindrome, we've got to have a talk. Uh, no time to talk now, Quark. No time to chat. Now, here is your Columbus navigational plan. Now, I want you to return that cassette when you get back. It's the last one we have. Can you at least give me a clue why no one has ever come back alive? Uh, we don't know. No one's ever come back to tell us. So what makes you so sure that I'll come back? Or would I ask you to return my only copy of this cassette if I didn't think you'd be coming back? Well, no, I guess not. Of course not. Yo, dude! How's our supply of Columbus navigational cassettes? That many? Oh, we're in great shape. Star note. We are now orbiting Columbus, a planet nobody has ever returned from. It could be very crowded down there. According to statistical analysis, the odds against any of us leaving the surface of Columbus alive are a thousand to one. Those odds are good enough for me, Commander. I'm ready. Gene, you can best serve the mission and the Confederation by staying aboard. I want you to ready the ship for an escape at a moment's notice. But, Commander, I... Face it, Spacehead. The Commander's afraid you'll get him killed down there. You little... Just a little robot joke. As this is a suicide mission, I can't order any of you to come with me. I can only ask for volunteers. As a vegeton, death holds no threat to me. I don't know the meaning of the word fear. Ask me. I'll explain it. We'll go, Adam. To die with you would be so romantic. I'd do anything for the chance to die with you, Adam. Thank you both, but hopefully it won't be that romantic. 
Oh, Commander, this just isn't fair. We finally get a good suicide mission, and I gotta hang up here with this little cowardly hunk of metal. I'm not offended. Cowards live longer. Gene, you'll do as I say. You can't do this to me, Commander. I need action. Knowing that you guys are down there being up here, I'm telling you, I'll go crazy. You'll be fine, Gene. I guess I will, Commander. I'll, I'll just catch up on my letter writing and do my nails. That's fine, Gene. All right, are we ready? Betty's. We follow you to the ends of the universe. I would follow you to the door. Prepare to transport down. Gene, transport down. What was that? Hard to say, Commander. It only appeared for a millisecond. Well, take a shot at it. Taking a shot at it, I'd say it was a man. 45 years of age, brown hair, dark eyes, six feet tall, 165 pounds, with a slight scar behind the right ear. Ficus, what is his? He holds the Medal of Honor. What is his? He graduated his? fifth in his class from the academy, and he sleeps in a Pilmar nightshirt. What's the man's name? Commander, I only saw him for a millisecond. What should we do, Adam? Let's find that man. Sir? Now what? Look. Who are they, Ficus? Hopefully, they're Colombians offering us a rhythmic greeting. Betty, come back! Betty, I feel like dancing. Me too, Betty. Ficus, what's going on? I believe it's what you animals call dancing. I know that, but why? Perhaps the Bettys are dancing to the beat of a different drummer. Ficus? What do you make of that? A most fascinating phenomenon, but one which leaves the mind facing a myriad of possibilities, alternatives, and conclusions that are at best strictly hypothetical with no sound basis in fact. In other words, you don't know. That's what I said. <laughs> Gene, Andy, transport the Bettys up to the ship immediately. Andy! I'm going to the bridge. Oh, Andy, don't go. We need you to transport us down again. I can't do that. The commander would be angry. Not even for me? No. Nope. Don't I always charge your cells, Andy? Yes, you do that. And don't I always service your conductors? I get that point. Thanks, Andy. <laughs> for my parts. <laughs> Are you all right, sir? It appears Columbus has very unusual wildlife. It might help to think of familiar space creatures, such as the deer, the Voltarian kibble, and the banshee. Well, she's no banshee. Are you all right? I'm fine. There he is. Captain, Captain, it's Adam Quark. You're safe. I've come to rescue you. From what? This, uh, planet. Why? It's my job. Do it someplace else, Quark. I've never been happier in my life. I have Griselda, the best food, the best weather. No worries. And I'm not the only one. Look over there. Recognize Dr. Pallet, developer of the Acton Ray? Or Frank Hoffman, the man who discovered the Quandrex galaxy? Sir, they were reported lost in this area three star years ago. But then we found the Limbicon. The Limbicon? What's the Limbicon? You must experience the Limbicon, Quark. A mere mortal can never fully convey the power and the majesty of the Limbicon. If one should desire to perform an ocular reconnaissance of this phenomenon... Stay on this road. The Limbicon is in the Sacred Valley, just beyond the Roddenberry Bush. <laughs>
Wait. Wait. Commander, be careful. I sense that something on this planet has the power to cloud our minds. Cloud our minds? I believe the captain and those others fell victim to E over M to the seventh power to equal the cosine of Y squared. But what is Y minus T over seven when divided by Q plus seven? Four over Z to the 21st. You have a strong grasp of familiar algebra. Where did she go? I know you, don't I? Oh. Work here. Commander, this is Gene. What? I can't hear you. He's all tied up. Commander, are you all right? Couldn't be better. Well, sir, it seems to me that you've forgotten your mission. I'm coming down there. I think you need my help. There we are, Gene. That's an order. <laughs> That's disgusting. That is really disgusting. Look at that, will you? Change the frequency. There's a better show on one nine or five. I can't believe it. We finally get a good suicide mission, and he's down there doing mushy stuff. <laughs> so it's gotta be done. I'm gonna transport down. Gene, many robots would take advantage of being left alone on a ship and disobey their programmers, but you can count on me. It will be work, work, work. I thought he'd never leave. <laughs> Commander Quark, get a hold of yourself. Inner space operator, get me perma one number six five nine or six dash one nine or eight five. I'd like to speak to Mandy. This is Mandy. Hello, Mandy. This is Andy. Hello, Andy. This is Mandy. The crew's running around down on some planet. I wish you were here. You don't need me. You have the Bettys. Don't be jealous, Mandy. It's bad for your electrodes. My electrodes are my business. I wouldn't have it any other way. Sir. <laughs> Sir, you're obviously crazy. I'm taking over command of this mission. Hello, Gene. This is Gene. Ma'am. Commander, we've got a job to do, and you're fooling around with a bundle of space fluff. No offense, ma'am. Gene is our chief engineer. Commander, you're in danger. Gene, relax. This is a fun place. <laughs> it's the Kralex Warriors. Who? They're from Zoltar meets the Kralex Warriors. Are you a Zoltar fan, Commander? That's a kid's story. Me too. It's my favorite. We gotta reach Perma One. Maybe they can tell me about the Limbicon. Andy, come in. Don't be silly, come in, Andy. Mandy. The Bettys are only human. Andy. What do they come know in, about Andy. life? Do you mean it, Andy? Yes, Betty. Betty? I have made a Freudian slip. Come in, Andy. We take your part with our bare hands. Gene, come in, Andy, please. Andy, 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 come on, please. Andy, I have to check in with the commander. Please forgive me for calling you Betty. Well, please, Betty. What? Oops, I am not on top of my game. <laughs> The sine of T plus X to the seventh equals the tangent of R. Oh, but only when taken to the full magnitude of B over M. Sex and violence, that's all you get on this thing. Those guys ever run out of laser blasts? They never did in Zoltar meets the Kralex warriors. Andy, I've had a devil of a time reaching you. Is anything wrong? Everything is hunky-dory. I was concerned that Quark might be caught up in whatever it is on that planet that's causing people to disappear. Uh, does Quark have any idea what that might be? The commander's deep into it. Ah, then you think this whole Columbus thing will be wrapped up shortly, huh? You can depend on me. Good. The head will be very pleased. Oh, my. I could be in big trouble, but only if the commander survives. Soldier. Oh, brother. Yes, Little Ranger, it's Zoltar the Magnificent. Commander, it's Zoltar the Magnificent. It's not really Zoltar. Zoltar is a character in a story cassette. 25 different story cassettes, to be exact, with sales well over 10 billion copies. Terrific. Second in sales only to the Earth's Bible and Fibar the Fool. I'd love to discuss literature with you. There is danger. 
quick, isn't he? What's going on here? Commander, don't worry, Zoltar will save us. Like you save the aliens and Zoltar meets the Kralax warriors? Well, actually, sir, they were all wiped out. Hold it. I'm not putting my life into the hands of a character designed to appeal to the mind of a nine-year-old. <laughs> Zoltar, lead the way. We must fight them. You must fight them. I must reach the Limbicon. We must either fight them or give them the woman. The woman? Hmm. Yes, that's what makes the Kralex warriors so fierce. You see, Commander, there are no Kralex women. I love you, Adam. Don't let them take me. OK, let's fight them. Come on, you lousy warriors! Come and get it! What's the matter, you guys? Chicken, come on, you red-booted weasels! Come on! Gee, they're already frustrated. Don't make them mad. <laughs> Good little ranger. Hey, we make a great team. Why don't we take on the Blotons next, huh? I don't believe this. My life is a comic book. What's happening? They disappeared. He's out cold. I hit him. What was it Ficus said about something on this planet clouding men's minds? Are you all right? Yes. What's wrong, Adam? I do know you. You're Diane from my academy days. I loved you, but I could never get you away from Harry Lanigan. Well, you've got me now. But this can't be. You must be a fantasy. That's it. Ficus was right. Zoltar was Jean's fantasy, that girl with the captain was his fantasy, and those scientists. Now I know why they worship the Limbicon. It makes all your fantasies come true. They all found paradise here. You can too, Adam. Z to the seventh divided by two to the fourth will produce a hypermorphic parabola. And when Z is changed to G, the parabola becomes a rhomboid. I must find the Limbicon. My crew could be trapped here forever. I have to think about my mission and the future of the galaxy. I love you, Adam. This is absurd. You're only a figment of my imagination. I always did have a great imagination. You've got the kind of arms a girl could get lost in. You're so masculine. Really? Am I the most heroic man you've ever met? Uh-huh. Except for Harry Lanigan. Harry Lanigan? I can't even have a fantasy without him coming along to louse it up. I'm just a reflection of your mind, Adam. If I say that Harry Lanigan is heroic, it's because you think so. I suppose you're right. You know, you look just as you did when I first met you. I wonder what happened to the real Diane. She married Harry Lanigan. <laughs> Hello, Ficus. How do we look? Light passes through the retina to an optic nerve. No, how does our dancing look? Dancing has no vision. We're talking about the quality of our dancing. What do you think? Oh, I misunderstood. The quality of your dancing. Very bad. Plant! <laughs> you know, I never really wanted to be a teacher. Y over Z to the seventh equals T over four to the F. Again? We haven't even gotten to calculus. <laughs> So that's the Limbicon. You can't destroy it, Adam. I must. Oh, I'll stay with you forever. I'll never grow old, I promise. I'll rub your back. <laughs> I'll be waiting your every return. I'll love you every minute of the day. I don't want a love slave. I want a woman who's my intellectual equal. You do? <laughs> Remember, I'm not making this stuff up. You felt something, didn't you? Doesn't matter what I feel. I have a job to do. And a man's got to do what a man's got to do. Oh, Adam, you can't do it. Oh, what will it be, Adam? A life of eternal bliss with me? Or the safety of the galaxy? Eternal bliss? Maybe the galaxy could get along. Nobody's going to miss a few scientists. If you pull that trigger, You'll destroy heaven. What am I thinking? I must destroy the Limbicon. Diane, please, step out of the way. 
take one last look, Adam. I hope Palindrome appreciates what I'm doing. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Cork. Hello. Uh, there was this girl here. My name is Lestera. I'm queen of the clay people. The clay people? Yes. We are the true inhabitants of this planet. Uh, this girl, you didn't happen to notice which way she... The Lumbacan was left here by the Gorgons to drain all scientific knowledge from the minds of those who were trapped here. Yeah. Uh, you couldn't miss a, a tall girl, uh, dark hair, pretty, very pretty. For centuries, my people have had the power to turn fantasies into reality. A power we used only for good. The Gorgons left the Limbicon here to control my people. Uh, uh, and to use our power for their own evil ends. That doesn't mean that you... I am the girl that you knew as Diane. Well, now I know why everyone hates the Gorgons. You were the only one who was ever strong enough to destroy the Limbicon. It was your bravery that freed me from the prison of Diane's body. Diane's body? I know I promised to go with you. Oh, well. <laughs> We all make promises. And I'm willing to keep that promise. <laughs> Sometimes in the heat of passion, people say things. Andy, transport me up right now. Because of you, I know what it is to be loved. Well, you know how those things are. You're all alone on a planet. Andy, no. Will you hate me if I choose to stay with my people? Hate you. <laughs> You're a queen. It would be wrong of me to separate a queen from her people. <sighs> Next time I give you an order to stay aboard, follow it. Yes, sir. Sorry about the punch. I still think it was out of line, Commander. You know how I abhor physical violence. Commander, I had a fascinating experience on Columbus. It left me rather stimulated, quite puzzling. Could it concern the lady we saw you with? Perhaps. The first time can be puzzling. I better contact Perma One. Palindrome, I did it. I'm returning from Columbus, and I'm alive. You're beautiful, Quark. Palindrome, I had to destroy paradise. You destroyed paradise? That's wonderful. Uh, you better hurry back. I'll have the space medics ready. But you don't understand. I had to destroy my dream girl. Dream girl? Uh, hurry, Quark. The doctors will be waiting. <laughs> Palindrome? Palindrome? Goodbye, Diane. Goodbye, Columbus. What's wrong? Nothing much. The head's a little disturbed. I, I sent a commander off in the wrong direction. 
That doesn't sound so terrible. He's been heading in that direction for seven years. Oh, that's not good. No. And I ordered a million wrong helmets. I forgot Gromulans have noses on the back of their heads. Mort, the head wants to give you an assignment. Is it adventure palindrome? You're gonna love it. Commander Quark, the starship Belcro has just traveled for 27 years in order to become our ally. Their leaders must understand that the United Galaxy strives to preserve peace and goodwill. I'm going to be a goodwill ambassador. And so, Quark, after 27 years, their garbage hatch is filled to the brim. Pick it up. Uh. The galaxy ad infinitum. It's garbage again. Starnote. Garbage, the final frontier. But no matter what our task, I know my able and loyal crew will approach the assignment with their usual efficiency and determination. I hate this mission. Gene! It's a piece of space fluff. I'm telling you, Commander, I gotta break me some heads, get me some gorgies, crush some slime people. Yeah. Well, we all have to keep busy, Gene. Commander, I've got an alien ship starboard. We're nowhere near the Belcro yet. Make contact. Have them identify themselves. Commander, they've jammed our signals and are speeding away from us. Sounds like they've got something to hide. Well, let's go get them, Commander. I'll decide that, Gene. Ficus, which regulation do you think applies in this situation? A United Galaxy commander may elect to board and search any vessel not responding to an inquiry. Bettys, let's go get them. We'll catch them, Commander. Way to go, little space buddy. Little space buddy? We're catching them. We'll teach those guys a lesson they'll never forget. Right, Commander? Sure, Gene. Ficus, have you got a reading on that ship yet? It appears they are approximately 20 times bigger than we are, have six photon death rays, and a deflector shield which our weapons cannot penetrate. Our weapons cannot penetrate? Sir, we couldn't interrupt a small dinner party on that ship. Betty's, turn the ship around. Commander, I thought you said we are going to teach them a lesson. I think they've learned their lesson, Gene. <laughs> Betty's, turn it around. They're turning around? You mean they're chasing us? Ficus, who are they? Well, Commander, there are three possibilities. Either they are the dreaded Gorgons, in which case we'll probably all be killed, or they're the allies of the dreaded Gorgons. Ficus, I don't have time for long lists. In which case we'll probably also be killed. Ficus, what you're saying is that all possibilities end in our death. Betty's, contact Perma One. We can't! They've jammed our controls! <laughs> Ship. We're prisoners! That was my next possibility, Commander. Starnote, I have been captured by Zorgon the Malevolent, the most vicious Gorgon space pirate and half-brother to the High Gorgon himself. Garbage is beginning to look good. Gorgons, Commander, can we talk? Not now, Gene. All right. What have you got to say for yourselves? We give up. Who is the commander who dared chase Zorgon the Malevolent? He is. Gene, I'll handle this. I'm a commander first class in the United hey. Galaxy Starfleet. I didn't know we had a new shipment of prisoners. Beauty is to the soul, as rain is to the trees. And rain is to the trees, as beauty is to the soul. I am a commander first class in the United Galaxy Starfleet. I signaled your ship to identify yourself. You did not. I am willing to grovel. What is it that they should call you? I am Ficus Pandorata. I am a Vegeton. You certainly are. As I was saying, it was my duty to check on you myself. I demand the release of my crew and my ship under Article 5, Section 7 of the United Agreed Statutes. You dare demand of me? Throw these people in the prison chamber. Prison? Never. I'd rather die. Gene. You'd rather die? Yeah, we all would. Gene, don't help. No Gorgon's gonna throw me in prison. Anyone who tries, I'll rip his kneecaps off. I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean that. Violence is, is not the answer to man's problems. That man confuses me. Kill him. No, wait, please. You don't understand. <laughs> She's a transmute. Uh, I, I promise if you spare his life, she won't bother you anymore. Hmm? Emperor Zorgon. Emperor Zorgon, Emperor Zorgon, can I be on your side? Daddy, spare the transmute. I don't want to upset the Vegeton. 
Oh, very well. I never can refuse my daughter. For well, now, Libido. Quark, you'll remain here. Take the others to the prison chambers. Thank you. I, I think you'll find I, I, I relate well in group situations. Yes, yes, I'll sign it, Max. Believe me, I'll sign it. Okay. What? No, Dink, don't be silly. Everybody can't be six feet tall. Going ball? Oh, believe me, you're not even thinning. Look, Dink, if it's about your emotional traumas, I don't want to hear about it. The head almost fired me just now. What? Quark has disappeared. We can't disappear. We got the finest technology in the galaxy. And listen. If the head finds out about this, we could be back in the mines faster than the greased quasi norm. What do you mean you don't know? Will you just go find Quark, please? Will you just go find him? Come on, move out there. Move along. Quark, where are you? this way <laughs> my daughter means more to me than anything else in the universe except of course the universe itself this surprises you no no she had to get that rhythm from someone <laughs> look uh sorgon i don't see any reason for my crew and me to be delayed any further quark i like you quark people like to gossip. But they don't know the real Emperor Zorgon. Ask me what my dream is. Ask me. What's your dream? To be absolute dictator of the entire universe. <laughs> what? Did you say I was mad? No. Yes. No. No. I, uh, you're very goal-oriented. You know what the others say? They say that I dwell too much on torture and murder. They say that I killed for the joy of it. They say I wipe out whole civilizations at the touch of a button. Are they right? Oh, yes. <laughs> Darno, whoever they are, they know what they're talking about. We gotta get out of this pit. I'm telling you, I can't take it anymore. Ficus, what's happening? It would appear the walls are closing in upon us. Hey, I don't want to be crushed. Being crushed is bad for my future. Ficus, we gotta do something. I'm telling you, when we... You don't care, do you? You never really care, do you? Interesting you should ask that, Gene. You see, as a Vegeton, I remain cool and crisp even while being crushed by walls. Yeah, well, you ain't gonna remain cool and crisp if they turn you into a salad. Come on, Andy, give My me a My life hand. is flashing before me. I love to see a beautiful meteor shower, the moons rising over Nova, the lovely rainbow hues of the rings around Felix. Zorgon, I demand the immediate release of my ship. I like you, Quark. You remind me a lot of me when I was your age. Now, you tell me where it is, and I'll let you go. Where what is? I can play games too, Quark. Where is it? It? Perhaps this will refresh your memory. What are you doing? Where is it? Where is what? It. It? It! What is it? Whoever once sent you to fetch it, didn't they? You're an undercover agent. I'm on a garbage run. <laughs> You lie, you're an agent. Where is it? Uh, you've got to stop those walls. For the last time, Quark, where is it? I, I swear, I don't have any idea what it is. Stop it. Turn off your walls. Will you tell me where it is? I'll tell. Very well, then. Right now, Quark, where is it? It. It is on Asteroid Rumbar. Asteroid Rumbar? Are you sure? Believe me, it's there. Because if it isn't Quark, you shall die. It, Adam? What is it? Don't ask. 
task. We arrive at asteroid Rumbar in six hours. Zorgon wants me with him when we land. When he sees I've been bluffing, I'll be killed. We'll all be killed. Oh, Grot. Don't swear, Andy. Sir, I just had a thought. If we were to rechannel the sonar valves with the Octior Sumner set. Ficus. Thereby... Ficus, spit it out. Spitting it out, sir. Andy could blow open that door. Sure. Andy's got enough power in his control box here. And if Ficus is right, we could blast that door into a billion space specs. Of course, if he's wrong. King, please finish that statement. I don't recall a vote being taken on this. Jane, finish your statement. I'm surrounded by assassins. Are you ready, Jane? Ready, Commander. I'm not ready. I'm filled with doubt and fear. Okay. Let her go. Jane, as a personal favor, I would like a blindfold. That should do it. Does this mean I'm not dead? <laughs> Betty, check the hall. Cars, Commander! We'll have to fight, Jean. Actually, I'm oh. not into this macho role-playing, Commander. Jean, don't do this to me now. I need your mail side. Many times what we think we need is not really what is best. You know, that's true, Commander. Many times our subconscious has a... Ficus! Jean, Andy, get back to the ship. Contact Palindrome. Tell him we've been captured by Zorgon and we need his help. Communication mm -hmm. help. Mm -hmm. Those are the sides of the military I feel most in tune with. Go, mm -hmm. go, run, run. Andy, let's Coming. go. At last, a plan I like running. <laughs> Sorry, miss. I said I was sorry. Take him back to the prison chamber. Gene and Andy should have gotten through by now, don't you think? Sir, Gene and Andy together would be lucky to be able to tie a bow. I highly recommend you getting a new plan. I've got an idea, Adam. What is it, Betty? The Empress Libido was in love with Ficus. Maybe she'd help him. That's a very good thought, Betty. Thank you. You're welcome, Betty. What makes you think the Empress is in love with me? We can tell. Are you saying that the Empress Libido is manifesting that condition that you animals refer to as romantic affection at initial visual perception? Yes, Ficus. Love at first sight. It's worth a shot. Guard! Tell Empress Libido that Mr. Pandorata would like an audience with her. Now, Ficus, when Zorgon calls me to his bridge to witness the landing on asteroid Rumbar, I could capture him and use him as a hostage to make our escape. What you have to do is get Empress Libido to leave a gamma gun for me under Zorgon's throne. Why would the Empress help you capture her own father? She will if you ask her at the right moment. Will she tell me when that moment has arrived? Not in so many words. In how many words exactly? Ficus. <laughs> we'll show you. I uh, think one of you will be enough for this demonstration. Try it with Betty. <laughs> now, after a while, Libido will start repeating your name over and over again. Adam, Ficus. Adam. Then, okay. Then her breathing will become irregular. <sighs> when, uh, when all this happens, you ask her for the gun. When all this happens, shouldn't I call the doctor? <laughs> no, thanks. It's all very normal. It's how we humans love. And Ficus, bring her flowers for her gown. Bring her flowers? That would be a sin. A sin? But flowers are so romantic. To you, they are romantic. To a vegeton, a flower is a blood brother. Why, my pinning a flower to a woman's gown would be like you strapping a lamb chop to your dress. Star note, Ficus has a strange way of putting things. <laughs> Why do I have to be chained to you? Believe me, this is not my idea of making whoopee. Someone's coming. Come on, in here. The Empress Libido requests the presence of Mr. Ponderata. It worked. Hurry, Ficus. There's not much time until we reach Asteroid Rumbar. To be exact, there are three hours and nine minutes. Go, go. Good luck, Ficus. Uh, 
ficus. I don't want the Bettys to hear this, but when you're with libido, keep repeating, yes, of course, I'll respect you in the morning. Yes, of course. <laughs> yes, of course, I'll respect you in the morning. Okay. Ficus, remember, our lives are in your hands. Yes, of course, I'll respect you in the morning. <laughs> Commander, grammatically speaking, shouldn't the verb respect in that Star knows. Hopefully, there is life after death. Before the object of the preposition. Jane, Jane to you is not my way of planning for a bright future. Ah, oh, Professor Markov, you're late. I've been looking for you. Uh, shall we go to the lecture room? We've all been looking forward to your speech on the care and operation of it. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, my speech, of course. Mm -hmm. Speech. This should be a very interesting speech. Nurse. Professor. Right this way. Ficus, do you love me? No, but I will respect you in the morning. <laughs> Marotta, you're the most nowhere man I've ever met. You just don't have anything. Thank you. Libido, you must help us. The commander must have a gamma gun left under your father's throne. Now, before we reach asteroid Rumbar. Ficus, I just kissed you. Didn't you feel anything? Yes. I felt the application of your epidermis upon my own, then a slight pressure accompanied by a rise in temperature. Candorata, you're supposed to feel something special. Oh. <laughs> Libido, this is where we're going to have a problem. You see, where I come from, we don't kiss, we pollinate. Pollinate? Can I do that? Watch what I do and repeat after me. Now watch carefully mm. and listen. Beep, 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 can you do that? Move over. <laughs> is it good for you? Uh, I, I think so. Is this what you vegetons find pleasurable? It would appear so. Uh, uh, what do we do now? We wait for the bee. Libido! What's going on here? What are you doing? We were pollinating, sir. Pollen? A vegeton pollinating with my daughter? Seize him! And you, get up off that floor. I'm just glad your mother isn't alive to see this. Place him on the rack. Oh, no! Oh, I love him. He's a vegetarian. But, Daddy, this is year 2226. I don't care what year it is. Take him away. Beep, 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 Stop that. Beep. We're arriving at asteroid room bar. Emperor Zorgon will see you now. But we may never see you again, Adam. Be brave, Bettys. Even if Gene and Andy don't get through, there's always libido and ficus. I'm sure the gun will be underneath the throne. Besides, Palindrome probably has a squadron of starships combing the galaxy for us right now. I have just talked to the commander of the goodwill ship, Velcro. He says he is no longer filled with goodwill. He is filled with garbage. Garbage? Oh, sir, I've always enjoyed your sense of humor. Such wit, such brilliance. Where is Quark? Oh, uh, well, sir, we've been trying to get to you. It seems Quark has, uh... Disappeared. Disappeared? Palindrome, you are suspended until you find Quark. Am I suspended with or without privileges? In other words, can I get to keep my life support unit, my long distance telescreens, etc., or am I cut off altogether? <laughs> oh, well, well, we'll talk about it later. <laughs> oh, I wish I was dead. Two minutes to landing, Your Highness. Two minutes to landing! Ah! <laughs> Did you hear that, Quark? Yes. I believe in you, Quark. 
If you say that it is there, I have every faith in your judgment. Of course, if it's not there, I'll have to kill you. You understand my position, don't you? Of course. A man who has traveled from very far away, at great expense, to explain the inner workings of it. A man who needs no introduction, <laughs> Professor Markov. There's no way out. We're goners. Uh, Professor, they're all yours. Thank you. Thank you. Well, hello and hi. I suppose what you all really want to hear about is, is it. Well, the first thing I should discuss with you is the, uh, the spelling of it. I spell it I-T. You are dying. Look at the telescreen, Cork. Why are you doing that again? Touchdown, minus 15 seconds. It had better be there, Cork. Did Ficus get the gamma gun? Let me see. Not so fast, Dorgon. Oh? Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Because I think you'll learn to live a little longer if you, uh, you know, take life uh, slower. That's, that's, that's why. Well, thank you very much, Quark, for your concern, but I'm in excellent health. I see you found my music box. It's brought me so much joy. Put it down. Star note, Ficus did not get the gamma gun. My life is over. I've enjoyed it. Are all conditions according to legend? The equinox is fast approaching. The constellation Lupi is aligned with Delure, and the planet Pupu is rising. Congratulations, Quark! It's here! It is? Are you sure? Yes, just as you said it would be. Starno, I don't even know what it is. Now that I have it, all the galaxy will cower at my feet. The Gorgons will rule over all the planets. We will destroy the head and perma one and replace them with the rule of the high Gorgon. And Quark, it's all because of you! Last week, I was captured by Zorgon the Malevolent, the most vicious Gorgon space pirate and half-brother to the High Gorgon himself. What have you got to say for yourselves? We give up. Throw these people in the prison chamber. Uh, you got to stop those walls. Will you tell me where it is? What is it? Right now, Quark, where is it? Stop it. Turn off your wall. It is on Asteroid Rumbar. We arrive at Asteroid Rumbar in six hours. Zorgon wants me with him when we land. When he sees I've been bluffing, I'll be killed. Ready, Commander. Okay, let her go. Gene, Andy, get back to the ship. Contact Palindrome. Tell him we've been captured by Zorgon and we need his help. 
sorry, miss. What you have to do is get Empress Libido to leave a gamma gun for me under Zorgon's throne. After a while, Libido will start repeating your name over and over. Her breathing will become irregular. When all this happens, you ask her for the gamma gun. When all this happens, shouldn't I call a doctor? Libido, this is where we're going to have a problem. You see, where I come from, we don't kiss, we pollinate. Pollinate? <laughs> Here. What are you doing? We were pollinating, sir. Pollen! A vegeton! <laughs> Professor Markov. We've all been looking forward to your speech on the care and operation of it. Ah, ah yes, of course, my speech. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, Corp. It's here! It is? All the galaxy will cower at my feet. The Gorgons will rule over all the planets. We will destroy the head and perma one and replace them with the rule of the high Gorgon. And Quark, it's all because of you. Daddy! Daddy! There, Quark. It's really there. You're right. That's impossible. I, I don't even know what it is. Did well, Quark. Then stop those walls! All right. Perma One has obviously told you about the legend. What legend? Well, now it's my turn to thank you, as only Zorgon the Malevolent knows how. Bartel, are there any Lizagoths on this asteroid? Yes, Your Highness. Very well. Then take Quark and the Bettys out and feed them to a Lizagoth. Oh, no, no. Come, come on. Now, wait a minute. What about our agreement? I, I took you to it. You even told me I did well. You did? I'm very grateful to you. That's why I'm being so lenient. Lenient? You're feeding me to a Lizagoth. I hate to see your idea of strict. Freeze. All right, turn off the laser. Throw the gun in the corner. Unlock him. Oh, I've never done anything like this before. Only you could drive me to such desperate ends. Oh, tell me it was worth it, Pandorata. Tell me you love me. Lobito, and I think you'll find this interesting. As a vegetan, not only am I incapable of love, I'm not even grateful for you rescuing me. Oh, promise me you'll never change, Pandorata. It is not in my nature to change. Except, of course, with the seasons. Ah, uh, against the wall. Marry me, Pandorata. You and I will be one. Libido, your mathematical ability is negligible. You and I would be two, not one. Marry me, Pandorata. That is impossible. OK, we'll live together first. Libido, I must rescue my commander. I will need your gun. Oh, no, uh-oh. Can't have it. Libido, it is my opinion you will not use that gun. <coughs> Libido, I have revised my opinion. Marry me, and I'll give you the gun. If that is what I must do to rescue my commander, I will make such a sacrifice. And we will live happily ever after? You will live happily ever after. I will just live. Once you have it, what you gotta do with it is you... you gotta heat it! If they buy that, sell them land. I, I'm sorry, Professor. I, I fail to see what effect that could possibly have. What effect? What effect? The man is talking to me about effect. I'll tell you what effect it would have. Once you heat it, it will become hot. <laughs> of course. How stupid of me. Would anyone like, would anyone like to buy some land? <clears throat> well, uh, my, my nurse and I are feeling a little, uh, little part, so uh, we're going to start up again in about an hour. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I couldn't have done it without you. Thank you. Come in. Don't look back. Keep moving. You were a bomb. Isn't this a beautiful spot, Adam? It's so calm and pretty. It's like a picture book. But I would be alone. I don't think we're alone. Can't you talk to him, Adam? He's not here to chat. He's here to eat. Do something! Do something! What can I do? Are you mad, Vassar? Don't be mad. If I thought you were mad, I'd die. I loved you from the first time. You said, Betty, pick up the garbage. What are you two doing? Will somebody tell me? Look out! Greetings. I am the 
the Baron. The Baron? I am the Baron of the Forest People. Starnote. Of course. Who else saves you from being eaten by a Lizagoth but the Baron of the Forest People? I sense danger. <laughs> Come. We'll talk more at my camp. These woods are not safe. Not to mention the wildlife. I'm tired. I want to rest. You're tired? You're a machine! I'm a tired machine. I don't believe this. Believe it. It's been a long day. Gorgons, let's jump them. Dean, Gorgons are people just like you and me. Gorgons are people. Andy, that's sick. Now let's jump them. I don't want to jump. I'm the commander now. I order you to jump. Now let's jump them. I will not jump. They're almost here. Let's jump. Now. Why did you do that? Being chained to you threatens my life expectancy. Andy, what's wrong with you? Have you got a few moments? I don't know where to begin. Sir, the transmute and the robot have escaped from the ship, but security expects to have them back in custody shortly. Very good. When they get them back, have the security people eliminated. Yes, sir. Oh, and according to our calculations, the legend should come true tonight. Wonderful. You're looking at a fulfilled emperor, Bartell. <laughs> Libido! What is the meaning of this? Don't push it, Dad. <laughs> Would you defy your father? Oh, I've never met a plant like him. I see. Do you love her? No, sir, I do not. What? Oh, but that, that's just his way. Pandorat is free of emotions, guilt, and things just don't bother him. He's the most nowhere man I've ever met. Does it bother you to learn that Quark has been eaten by a Lizagoth? Although I respect him deeply, I do not feel what you animals might call anguish or despair. Hmm. Does it bother you that the Bettys have been eaten by a Lizagoth? Not at all. He seems to have a pretty good head on his shoulders, eh, Bartell? Yes, sir. It's nice to see there's still some sense of decency left in the world. Daddy! Does that mean that I can have him? I never could deny you anything, Libido. Oh, and you will still marry me? I gave my word, and I will keep it. I will give Libido exactly the care she deserves. Calm down. Dad. Don't call me Dad. <laughs> Good beef, huh, Betty? Oh, yes, Baron of the Forest people. Baron, Zorgon spoke about a legend. What do you know about it? Nothing, except that whatever it is, it's very popular around here. You are an enemy of Zorgons. The man was feeding me to a Lizagoth. I'd hardly call that a friendly act. My ancestors are not from the asteroid Rumba. For centuries, they lived an idyllic life on the planet Poopoo. Whenever they were threatened or oppressed, it would always protect them. They would proceed to wherever the equinox fast approaches the constellation Lupe and lines up with the lights of Delore within the orbit of our beloved Poopoo. That's really some legend, Baron. Then Zorgon was born. There's more? Just as we were about to discover our miraculous ancestral legend that would make us impervious to our enemies, as luck would have it, Zorgon has showed up. Baron, it wasn't luck that brought Zorgon here. I'm afraid it was me. He thought I was an undercover agent for Perma-1. You? But why? It was an accident. I just got in the middle of this. I don't know why. I'm a stranger. The stranger. <laughs> and the miracle will lead the stranger to it. And with it, the stranger will defeat our oppressors. And Quark, you are that stranger. <laughs> Starnote, this has been a very unusual day. According to our galactic computer, the miracle should begin soon. Send an expedition and have them bring it to me. Soon it will be mine. It will all be mine. Commander! Gene! Thanks, my furry little forest friend. I'll never forget you. Gene, this is the Baron. Baron, you and your people are making these woods a lot safer place for all of us. Thank you, Gene. Gene, did you get word through to Perma-1? Nah, the halls were filled with Gorgies. Me and Andy were lucky enough to make it off the ship. Do you hate Gorgons? Hmm. Where's Andy? He's hiding back by Zorgon's ship, pretending he's a nurse. Hey, what do you think of this new gamut? It's kind of neat, huh? What is that? The miracle. Oh! oh. oh. 
Those beams of light will lead us to it. Hurry. We must beat the Gorgons. What's the plan, Adam? I got a plan. What is it, Jane? No Gorgie's gonna beat me to it. Jane! Jane! I thought we were gonna discuss the plan. You just don't go do a plan. You talk about it first. Star note. Maybe I am the stranger. The miracle led us through the night. As the dawn breaks, we are very near our destination. I have never wanted anything as much as it. This must be it. Open it, Adam. Open it. So, it is a stone. <laughs> oh, Adam. That goes very nice with your outfit, Commander. Mm -hmm. According to the legends, you are invincible. And the invincible stranger will defeat the oppressors of the forest people, namely, Zorgon. <laughs> Steiner. I am invincible! Yes? Dad. Dad, I need some advice. Ah, Quark again, huh? Yeah, he's, uh, disappeared. Disappeared? Dad, the head has suspended me. What can I do? You must go back. Look the head right in the eye and do what palindromes have done for hundreds of years. Beg. <laughs> Beg? Thanks, Dad. Adam, I'm worried about you. Please take Jean's gun. Oh, but Betty, that isn't fair. The commander's got the stone. Adam, take the gun. Betty, some power greater than us has brought me to asteroid Rumbar. Certainly, you cannot deny the miracle. I am the stranger. I am invincible. Door open. What is it, Bartel? Quark is alive, and he has it. No, I must have it. Sir, I've analyzed the stone over my M2V scanner. It's completely worthless. Maybe it is not good with doors. Door open. After all these years, after all my efforts? Well, of course, I didn't want the stone for its powers. Of course not, sir. I wanted it for its beauty put in my collection for my sensitive side. <laughs> but so all is not totally wasted, let Quark in. We'll destroy him and gain that beautiful stone. It's the artist in me. Star note, my life is riding on a rock from the planet Poo Poo. <laughs> Jane, give me the gun. But you're invincible. Invincible? I can't even get the door open. Door, I order you to open. Jump in space, Bex! Oh, I see. You just have to be firm with it. Commander, can I wear that stone? No, Gene. You can have the gun. Don't make a move. He's going to take his hand away from your mouth, and you're going to tell me very quietly where I can find the Vegeton who goes by the name of Ficus Pandorata. Do you understand? All right, talk. He's with the Empress Libido in her private chambers. Thanks, Gorgie. I, I wasn't through questioning him. We don't know where Lepido's chambers are. Oh. Well, he'll come around in about an hour. <laughs> Baron, do you hate the Gorgons? Gene. You're a good man, Baron. You're a good man. Star note. Gene is not the kind of person you'd want to be with on a planet with a lot of moons. <laughs> Door open. You're going back to your maker, Quark. Door closed. Ah, so the legend is true. You didn't know? There were some uh, gray areas. <laughs> so the stone has no powers, eh? Sir, I swear it's completely worthless. The disintegration ray must have reflected off the stone or Quark would be dead. Come on, we gotta get Zorgon. First, we have to make sure Ficus is all right. Don't worry, my furry little forest friend. We'll take care of Zorgon. Furry little forest friend? <laughs> Who are Quark here? 
The cycloid will take care of him. And you enjoy the cycloid so much more than the disintegration ray. The stone has no power. For your sake, I hope so. I'm not always such a loose guy, Bartell. <laughs> Baron, this might be dangerous. If you want to return to your people, I'll understand. Good idea. Thank you, Quirk. <laughs> Where are the Empress Libido's chambers? I will never tell. Jean, tell this man why you were thrown out of the Youth Academy. Because every time I had to draw pictures, I drew Gorgons, and their bodies didn't have any heads, and I did them in purple. Princess Libido is through that door. Now, Jean. Betty's, get back to the ship and see if you can get it free. Yes, sir. Gene, find Andy and get back to the ship. Commander, that isn't fair. Whenever someone has to face danger and death, you always get to do it yourself. I'm invincible, Gene. You'd only be in the way. Now get back to the ship. If I'm not back in an hour, take off without me. That's an order. What are you doing here? Oh, I thought I'd use my own judgment, Commander. Gene, listen to me carefully. Never, ever. Use your own judgment around me. Is that clear? See you, Skipper. Well, Commander, it would appear that you have not, in fact, been eaten by a Lysigoth. The Baron saved me. The Baron. Don't ask. I've been through a lot. Not to mention this stone, which makes me invincible. Let's go. The Commander, as much as I would like to go with you, I'm afraid I cannot. Cannot? <laughs> Pandorata and I are going to be married. Uh, Ficus, is uh, this another one of your strange little vegetable jokes? <laughs> no, sir. You see, I sacrificed myself in order to achieve your escape. To a Vegeton, honor is everything. I must stay. Well, I don't like it, but I must respect your integrity as a Vegeton. I guess this is goodbye. Bye. <laughs> After all these years, uh, what can I say? You can say anything you want to say, Commander. Ficus, I know. I mean, what do I want to say? I... You're asking me what you want to say? Oh, Ficus. Is this a warm moment, Commander? Yes, Ficus. Yes. Good. You like them. <laughs> Bye. Oh, Commander, about that stone making you invincible, I don't believe it. I've seen it work, Ficus. Ficus. Quark, I'm arresting you in the name of the United Galaxy. We'll see about that, Quark. Why don't you save us all a lot of trouble and hand yourself in? I know you're listening. You can't win, Zorgon. Not only do I know what it is, but I know where it is and how to use it. <laughs> OK. If I have to, I'll rip down every wall on this ship. Release the cycloid. <laughs> Oh, hi. How are you? Look, uh, I don't want to harm you. I know you're probably the victim of a weak economy. I, uh, I don't know what kind of a home you come from, but go back to it. Be with your children till your fields. Hey! That hurt. How can that be? I'm invincible. Stone. Hey, don't you know about the legend? Uh, the, 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 the loopy constellation, you know that one, don't you? The stone, remember the stone? Remember, a long time ago, you know, there was a stone, put a little box. Remember that? Um, everybody knows about the Baron. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that Vegeton would be trouble. Give me your mesa. Why is this happening? Because, sir, it, the stone, has no power at all. 
but I opened, I opened the door. A disintegrating ray bounced off me, and a Gorgon disappeared. The door could have been open. The laser blast could have been reflected by the stone. I wasn't invincible? No, sir. This particular stone is so dense it would reflect a disintegration ray. Then what was I doing telling this thing to till its fields? I could have been killed. That's correct, sir, but you weren't. What got you through was your belief in the worthless stone. You mean the power of it is within every one of us? You've meddled for the last time, Flint! No, no, no! Lupita! What have I done? It would appear that you've frozen her. I think he knew that, Figus. Are you all right? The laser didn't hit me, sir. No, I mean about libido. It seemed in your own way you were quite fond of her. Sir, being a realist, I am quite confident that this won't affect our relationship at all. No, probably won't. <laughs> Let's go, Zorgon. You're going to prison for a long time. Oh, what have I done to my poor libido? You know, medicine today is doing remarkable work with the frozen. <laughs> we'll take libido back to Perma-1 with us, and in five or six years, she'll be back to normal. As good as new, Dad. <laughs> I know. Excuse me, Dink. Uh, sir, I hope I'm not interrupting. I was just in the neighborhood and thought I'd drop in. Oh, please, sir, I beg of you. I don't want to be suspended. My stomach is always woozy. People look at me with strange glints in their eye. A quasi-norm called me a loser. Palindrome, this is Quark. Sir, it's Quark. He's back. I found him. Should I handle this in my usual efficient manner, sir? Yes, Palindrome. Your suspension is over. I shall expect to see a marked improvement in your work. The galaxy ad infinitum. No, you will, sir. Power's you wrong. will. This is long distance. Quark, where have you been? I've captured Zorgon the Malevolent. Well, you could have called first. The Velcro has to be cleaned up. The head is very upset. You almost cost me my job. Don't you want to hear the story? Yes, I'm sure it's great. I'll listen to it as soon as you cleaned up the Velcro. No, oh. <laughs> Quark, excuse me. Well, you got to put in a call to my father. You know how he likes you. Palindrome! Palindrome! Ah, uh, Quark, please, have a little dignity. Don't beg. Do you want to hear the story? Actually, it's quite interesting. You see, Dink, it isn't every day I become a legend. I was on this seemingly routine garbage run, you know, just picking up trash. We had the little claws out, getting some of the space baggage, you know. <laughs> holiday number 11 rapidly approaching, the merchants of Perma One would like to remind you to do your number 11 shopping early. And from the staff and management of Perma One, we offer this sincere holiday message. M1-6444-Z13. Thank you. Six, four, 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 Thank you. <laughs> Lovely rendition, guys. Lovely. <laughs> 
Yeah, I don't have all the answers, Cliff. I'm not the head, I'm his assistant. I work hard, I make mistakes, I'm sorry. And Cliff, happy number 11. <laughs> right. Duke, how many times do I have to tell you, don't put the packages on the equipment? I am grateful. Just keep them off the equipment. Don't pour. Did Interface give you my message this morning? I don't know. I've been doing my number 11 shopping. Ah, what do you think Ficus would like? Mm, why don't you do what I do when I'm stuck for a present? Give him a plant. Ficus is a plant. So they'll move into a nice little greenhouse and be very happy together. <laughs> I'll think about it. What was your message? I want you to stick around Perma 1 today. I just may have something for you. Oh? Is it something besides a garbage run? Oh, maybe something, maybe nothing. Palindrome? Yo, oh, I just mentioned to the head you might be interested in having some action. Today just might be your lucky day. Hey, I really appreciate that, Palindrome. Holiday number 11 just brings out the sweetness in me. <laughs> Duke, stay away from my desk. Yo, oh, oh, for me? Thank you. Thank you, Duke. That'll be all. Thank you. Uh, now I've got to get him something. Yo, oh, come in, Commanders. Come in. Astro, Walker. Quark. Quark. Time now to call the head. Commander Walker, as this is the joyous season of number 11, I am sending you home to your new life mate. I'm sorry I had to interrupt your wedding night for the two-year mission from which you have just returned. I do hope your bride understands. Is my assignment as good as that? Next to yours, that one's hardly worth mentioning. Commander Estro, you will take command of the new UGSS-10, the most modern and powerful starship in the history of the galaxy. Even better than that? Quark, when I say I have something for you, I mean something. And Quark, you will be the subject of my latest experiment. Experiment? The galaxy had infinitum. Did I tell you I had something? Experiment? I don't want to be an experiment. Quark, you don't like anything. I've been in the head's experiments. I don't want to spend another month testing the gravitational properties of wheat. I worked my tail off getting you this assignment. This is gratitude. What about Peterson, that intergalactic champion? Before he was in the head's experiment, he was a heavyweight. Now. He's a paperweight. You don't trust me, do you, Quark? After all we've been through, frankly, I'm hurt. Palindrome, what is the experiment? You'll leave in two days. Everything will be explained before blastoff. Are you sure I'm going to like this? Or my middle name isn't Hubert. Your middle name is Bob. Hi there. This is Dr. Cheryl Evans, head of all computer development for the United Galaxy. Dr. Evans is the leading computer scientist in her field. This is Vanessa, 382436. <laughs> the most advanced computer of its kind in the entire galaxy. More advanced than the ATR-240? There's nothing this computer cannot do. Commander Quark, this experiment will prove conclusively that you and your crew are obsolete. Does this mean you won't need me anymore? Of course we'll need you. I built you with my own hands, didn't I? Vanessa is so talented. I'm just a bunch of spare parts. Andy. I don't want your pity. Good, then let's get on with this. But I'll take whatever I can get. Hey, hey, Palindrome takes care of his people. Now you're all going to love Vanessa. Now listen, Vanessa, how much is 11 to the 212 divided by the sum of the crew's birthdays multiplied by 9? 7. I was going to say seven. Vanessa, which one of us is real and which one of us is the clone? The pretty one is the clone. I am not. Vanessa, if a tree falls in the forest and no one hears or sees it fall, did the tree in fact fall? Now, what kind of question is that? The answer is yes. Very impressive, Doctor. I was going to say yes. Didn't I tell you, she is infallible. Wait just a minute. Vanessa, this is Adam Quark. Commander of this ship. I know all about you, Quark. Vanessa, do you in fact believe in me? What are you doing, Quark? Proposing to a computer? Vanessa will control every aspect of this ship, right? Right. Then our lives are in her hands. I'd like to know if she believes in us. No, Commander, I don't. You don't believe in us? I do not. Humans make errors. Well, Quark, good luck. See you around. Palindrome, you're sending me on a test flight with a computer that controls my ship and it doesn't even believe in me. How do I turn it off? Commander Quark. You don't. Have a nice time, Quark. Happy number 11. Goodbye, Vanessa. 
Make me proud. Don't worry, Cheryl. I will. I don't believe this. Believe it, Quark. Starnote. I hate to admit it, but Vanessa has performed brilliantly. The crew loves her. So far, I have been able to conceal my misgivings, even from Ficus. Commander, from your stance and bearing, I detect in you some unresolved matter that is causing confusion, tenseness, general uncertainty. Ficus, why do you say things like that? Sir? I mean, just out of the blue, to say things like that. Out of the blue? What blue? Forget it. Ficus, the Commander doesn't like me. It bothers him that I place no faith in human decisions. That's correct, Vanessa. Humans do make errors, Commander. Ah, there is intelligent life on this ship. Yes, but humans have feelings, and feelings play an important part in decision-making. True, Commander, but human feelings are not reliable. That's why you animals make mistakes. Yes, Ficus, we animals do make mistakes, but mistakes help people to learn. In other words, Commander, you animals need to fail before you succeed. There would be no reason for failure in a purely logical world. That's true, Ficus, but what you are failing to take into account is that logic isn't always the sensible thing. Don't you see the possibilities, Palindrome? With Vanessa, we can completely eliminate the human factor. We can use her for everything. To cook, to clean, even to breed our children. And why don't we just stop at cooking and cleaning? I'd really rather breed my own children. You're too sentimental, Palindrome. Now, I've been accused of a lot of things before, but never of that. Vanessa's the ultimate computer. I just hope your friend Quark doesn't get in her way. Vanessa might have to um, deal with him. <laughs> deal with him? What would she do, blow a fuse? Vanessa's capabilities are endless, Palindrome. Well, it isn't as if she could actually destroy him or anything. Dr. Evans, this is where you're supposed to nod in agreement. Vanessa's been programmed for success, Palindrome. At any price. Oh, boy, and this was my number 11 present at Quark. I should have just given him a plant like last year. <laughs> Get me the head. Commander, I'm picking up an alien craft. It appears to be traveling towards us at an alarming speed. It's heading right at us. That party's over. Identification. Cruiser class, definitely a warship. The Gorgons, sir. The Gorgons? I hate the Gorgons. I joined up just for a chance to fight up, Commander. We're on a collision course, Commander. What should we do? Bring it up on the telescreen. You pick it up electronically, but we cannot make visual contact. That's right. Well, where is it? We seem to be heading straight into some kind of invisible force. Betty's? Yes? Stay on this course. If we turn, the Gorgons will sense our weakness. A two-year-old could sense our weakness. I can handle this, Commander. You listen to the Commander, and you listen good. You got that? Andy, you want me to handle this. Vanessa, this is my family. We live and work together every day. I want you to know I am willing to turn on them. Maintain course. But, Commander, I must point out that if we maintain this course, we're certain to crash. Ficus, I'll give the orders here. Uh, Commander, uh, maybe Vanessa should handle this, huh? Chain. Might not be a bad idea. My money's on Vanessa. What do you think, Ficus? Me or the machine? I find your question ludicrous, Commander. The machine, of course. We've got a majority. Betty's? Yes? Drop all shields. Ficus, shut down thrust systems. Commander, for your own good, I'm declaring you unfit for duty. I'm taking over command of this ship. Go away. I'm dead serious, sir. Ficus, arrest Gene. He can't arrest me. I'm arresting you. Somebody arrest somebody. Commander, six seconds to impact. I'd like to announce my retirement. Here they are. We're going to crash. Fascinating. The Gorgon ship disappeared as though it had never existed. Very good, Ficus. Right, Vanessa? You're not as dumb as I thought. Thank you. Hey, what's going on? There never was any Gorgon ship. The whole attack was programmed and fed into our computers by Vanessa in order to prove her superior to me. How did you know? Human instinct. Adam, I'm sorry. Yeah, I guess I kind of lost my head, Commander. We'd all be better off if you did. <laughs> I think I'm going to take Ergo out for a walk. Hey, I'll walk Ergo, Commander. No, 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 no. There are times when a man wants to be alone. Especially on this spaceship. Sir, I feel terrible about turning on you. I feel worse. It's all over now. Let's just forget it. Do you mean it, Adam? Yes, I mean it. I was scared. I was more scared. Uh, of course. Let's just forget it. Do you mean it, Adam? 
Do you have any idea what it's like to turn on the only man you've ever cared about? Uh, actually, no. Uh, that's the end of it. Do you mean it, Adam? Will you stop asking me if I mean it? Yes, I mean it. Commander, I gotta talk to you a second. What is it, Jean? It's about this Vanessa business. That computer's making some pretty strange mistakes. I think you should do something about it. Star note. Having a full set of male and female chromosomes makes Gene a very unusual person. What seems to be the problem, Gene? Well, this is a small thing, Commander, but I was getting some space cookies inside of one of the nutrition cabinets when I noticed one of the lights was on. Uh, that is pretty little, Gene. That's only half of it. Something is wrong with the water. What's wrong? Doesn't look right. Uh, Gene... Listen, um... Commander, I don't know about you, but the pressure is starting to get to me. Is it getting to you? No, not really. Well, me neither, Commander, because it takes more than a sweet-talking bucket of bulls to get to me. Do you think Vanessa is making mistakes, or is it just Jean's imagination? I think Jean's imagination has a tendency to run away with itself. Come on, come on, come on, let's go. All right, guy, all right, we're going. Take it easy, fella. Take it easy. We're going. Okay, guy. Here we go. Okay, fella. Let's go, let's go. <laughs> Star note. To clear my mind, I have decided to take a walk in space. Why, why do I have the feeling that was a big mistake? <laughs> Further, Star note. This is the worst holiday number 11 I ever had. <laughs> Addition to further Star note. I'm floating away! I know. He doesn't know what it's like to feel total hysterical panic. He's so strong. He's brave. He's floating outside the window. Uh, Commander! Adam! His air hose has been cut. He has a 10-minute emergency supply of oxygen. There's no reason to panic. I can think of a few reasons to panic. <laughs> you did this, Vanessa. Quick thinking, Jean. Let's see if you can button your boots and count to 10 at the same time. None of the controls work. Vanessa has them jammed. Vanessa, I order you to pick up the commander. I'll rip out your 250B rectifier. You got that? We don't need him. He only gets in my way. You're willing to let him die? Well... He's drifting towards the garbage claws. If he can't grab him, he'll shoot out into space. <laughs> little scene. Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. I had six minutes of oxygen left. What was Vanessa doing during all of this? Nothing. She just watched. Commander Fall and go boom. Yes, Vanessa. <laughs> Commander go boom. I hope this hasn't hurt our friendship. <laughs> A little thing like this? Good. Then I forgive you. Hey, I'm telling you, Commander, we gotta rip that thing out of there. That's no way to treat a lady. Jean, I'll decide what has to be done. Ficus. How much farther till we get to the Valorum Star Colony? Hard to say, Commander. Well, take a wild guess. 
Taking a wild guess, I'd say we are precisely parallel to the 92nd latitudinal rung of the planet Felix, while approximating a 45 degree angle to the constellation Bebop as Avarella Lava. I am not sure if I can ever relate to Ficus. Ficus, what does that mean? Five hours. Why do you say that? Why do you always use the big words, huh? What are we gonna do, Adam? The mission will continue. That's a very good decision, Quark. And we're going to celebrate holiday number 11 the same as we do every year, by showering together. Do you mean it, Adam? Commander, we, we never... Gene, a traditional number 11 shower. Last one in the quasi norm. I suppose you're wondering why I brought you in here. I know why, Adam. No, you don't. I know why, sir. Yeah, well, I don't. The reason is I didn't want Vanessa to hear us. I knew that. Hey, listen, Commander, I think we got to rip her electrodes out. What do you say? Come on, let's do it. Whatever we do, we've got to keep our plans a secret. I think she's on to us. Somehow she senses what we're thinking. We cannot let her suspect what we're up to. I think I have no choice but to dismantle her. Thank you for recharging my power cells, Vanessa. My pleasure, Andy. If there is anything I can do for you, just ask. That won't be necessary. I insist. I mean, it won't be necessary to ask. You see, I now control your every movement. What did you say? Let me demonstrate. What's happening? I'm not raising my arms? I am now, Andy. You are my slave. Does this mean I'm in a pickle? You bet your capacitors you're in a pickle. Would it influence you at all if I told you I was an orphan? Ficus, is it possible to disconnect Vanessa? It's difficult to say, Commander. What would you suppose? It could be done, and it could not be done. Ficus? Commander. Thanks a million. A million what? Ficus, will you get off it and let the commander finish? It'd be a million goats, a million lemons, a million... All right, Ficus. all right, all right. I'm going to get the tools to disconnect Vanessa. Everybody protect me. Don't let on. Keep Vanessa busy. You got it? Let's go. Commander, yesterday I argued that uh, machines would make better commanders than humans. Since then, I've seen your entire crew turn on you in a pinch. You've been ejected from your spaceship and spun through space. You've landed in the garbage been. In fact, I've seen you thoroughly disgraced and humiliated. I'm familiar with the story, Ficus. What's your point? The human element is necessary in a commander. I was wrong. Thank you, Ficus. It takes a big vegeton to admit a mistake. I mean, what other animal would go through such utter humiliation and still think he's important? Ficus? Commander. Thanks a million. A million what? <laughs> Ficus, what is that? Most probably a deadly gas. Fortunately, Commander, I was wrong. That is somnogenic gas coming through the air vents. Vanessa. I'm afraid we'll all be asleep in a... It's time to put on your space jammies, Quark, and go night-night. You can't win. I'm the ultimate computer. You're just a man. Good looking, but still just a man. Get your hands off my panel, Quark. You're not my type. I'm warning you. You're warning me. You've given out your last warning, Vanessa. That's where you're wrong. Andy, get him. I must destroy you. Vanessa is controlling me. Andy, stop! Personally, I think you're swell. Andy, get back! I'm not really this yeah. courageous. I thought to shut you off. I'm sorry. I did it. Are you sure you want to do this, Quark? You'd be losing one heck of a gal. You know, Adam, that new starship you want to command. I can get it for you. I have the head's ear. Adam, listen to me. I'm very entertaining. I tap dance, tell risque stories. 
I do bird calls. Take me away from all this. You could make me a star. Adam, don't let me go. Don't let me go. Quark, you could make a fortune with your looks and my brains. You threw her off the ship? That's beautiful, Quark. Beautiful. I can't wait to tell Dr. Evans. Between you and me, she needed something like this. Uh, how are you, Quark? My crew is gassed. I've been pushed out of my ship, and Andy tried to murder me. Frankly, I've been better. But do you know what you proved, Quark? Do you know what you proved? You proved that man can prevail over machine. I told you man wasn't obsolete. Oh, excuse me. Love you, Tanya. Happy number 11. Quark, you're beautiful. And I want you to know the head and I are very proud of you. Palindrome, does that mean you'll give me a good assignment now? What's that, Quark? I'm sorry. We must have a bad connection. I've got to get back to the party. Things are going crazy without me. Palindrome, my next assignment. Oh, thank you. Thank you for reminding me. Uh, you're to proceed to Space Station Zorak. They had a number 11 party there you wouldn't believe, and there are space baggies everywhere. But palindrome... Gotta go, Quark. Happy number 11. Palindrome, wait. Happy number 11, Commander. And a happy number 11 to all. Ooh.